<laughs> so I'm Dr. Lulu Shimmick. I'm the botanical director here at the farm, at the Veterans Healing Farm. And first of all, welcome. We're really excited to have you here today to learn about plant medicine and aromatherapy for first aid. And this is a really fun talk today. It's going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be guiding you to make your own toolkit, which I think is a really important part of first aid, right? Like how do you bring everything we've been talking about over the past couple weeks and continuing through the rest of the summer to make your own toolkit, your own first aid kit, which is really important, right? It's the last thing you want to do when you have an emergency to like, oh no, now what do I do? I have to make something, <laughs> right? You want to have it all ready to go. And so it's a good compliment for what you might already have as a pharmaceutical first aid kit for an extreme emergency, of course, always dial 911 or go to your urgent care. But if you have your own first aid kit and you're also working with your partner in your home or your community, it's a great one to bring on. So we're gonna be talking about that today. You have a handout in your uh, folder. And this uh, one, if you've attended the other workshops, this is just one, I made it a combo together. It's a little bit different, so don't worry, you're not missing anything. So this one is herbs and essential oils for first aid. And then also you'll see some other things in your handout or your folder. There's a schedule, so we have two more workshops after this. We have Women's Health, which is gonna be super exciting on the 11th of September. And then we also have the last one of the season, Pain and Inflammation and that is on September the 18th. And so if you're still looking to uh, uh, join us for those workshops, please make sure to let us know, contact Tamlin. She can make sure either you're on the list or on the waiting list, because we have people that can't come, can come, etc. okay? So those are some of the things we have coming up. All right, so let's dive in. So today um, we're gonna be talking about first aid. So. For those of you that have attended, I think we only have one person that hasn't been to the previous workshops, and your name is Jake? John. 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 It's nice to meet you. So um, I'm going to be repeating some information, but it's great to hear it another time, right? Because then you're going to be like, oh yeah, it finally like, starts to sink in, and you start to, oh yeah, that's how I use this, or that's how I can use that. So some of the things will be repeated, but I'll try to keep things as like, fresh and new as possible. Um, so in the beginning of your handout, you'll see that, of course, there's a little um, introduction about me, so you can get to know me a little bit better. And then um, any uh, ways to follow me on Facebook, learn about other workshops I'm doing, also ways to contact me, which is a really important part if you have follow-up questions. So just a little bit about first aid in general. So why? Let's have some shout outs from you. Why are you interested? Why are you here today? What would you like to learn today about first aid? Anybody particularly? Yes. These are natural methods of, of, of uh, healing yourself as opposed to medications from a doctor. Great, yeah. So natural ways when you have, an, so first thing is usually an, an acute thing, right? Like you have a burn or a cut or you have a headache or you have nausea or diarrhea, like it's an acute thing, right? So herbal medicine is a great acute uh, formula and I'm also going to be talking about herbal medicine, uh, essential oils, and homeopathy today. A little bit of a twist I'm going to throw in. So you're going to learn a little bit about that and I'll explain what that is today. Anything else anybody's looking to learn about today? Yes, John. Right, yes, so John was saying like learning about um, using plant medicine and essential oils in ways that we haven't been using in the past, an alternative, right, which is great, and that's what we're going to be learning today. And that's what I love about first aid because we have so many different plants and essential oils and homeopathy that can be right in that acute kit. So a little bit about herbal medicine. So herbal medicine has been around for a long period of time. We've used it in ancient cultures, indigenous, all over the world, right? And so it got lost along the way through, through, you know, through different things as our world has developed in speed, right? We want to have this fast thing that we can take really quickly if something happens. We want that emergency 911 care. Like it's, it's a, an important part of what we're doing, right? We need to have that. But we can also have that support of herbal medicine and essential oils and homeopathy when we need it. And especially when we start using things that are more natural 
and taking better care of ourselves from a preventative standpoint, it allows those acute things to not be maybe so acute, right? Because our body's able to respond much better to an acute situation. Like for example, if you have traveler's diarrhea, maybe your gut is in a better place where your uh, probiotics and the herbs you're taking allow you to not have so much of a response where you're out of maybe commission for a few days on a trip. So herbal medicine, you can use it. We have lots of beautiful herbs here up on the table. I'm gonna be talking about these today. And also we have, <laughs> da -da -da. these are our herbs we're gonna be talking about for first aid. So these are the ones we're gonna be covering more in detail in your kit. And then also I put some others. So these are some other ones I'm gonna mention and you can write these down. So in your uh, swag bag, which you all have on your table. And here's a pen and a notebook. If you didn't bring one, you're more than welcome to use that, of course, in there and write down questions. You can also, yeah, take a picture. Great if you wanna be uh, able to access it later. So we're gonna be talking about calendula, St. John's wort, peppermint, particularis, valerian, kava, kava, and echinacea. These are our main herbs. And some of these we've already covered in some of the other workshops this year, which is really exciting because then you kind of see another aspect of how we use them. Also, we do have, if you missed a previous workshop and you would like the electronic version, please let us know. We would be more than happy to send you the booklet in electronic form. Some others we're gonna be talking about is aloe, arnica, bilberry, this is the vaccinium or cranberry family, fennel, ginger, and golden seal. So these are our, our main herbs today. And for essential oils, we're gonna be talking about peppermint, tea tree, lavender, myrrh, eucalyptus, and citronella. And then we're gonna, some highlights of some other ones, rosemary, geranium, chamomile, helichrysium, basil, and cypress. So those are gonna be our highlights today. So we have our main fresh plant matter. So getting back to what I was talking about, when we have an herb, we can use it in its fresh form or we can use it in its dried form. So we're gonna be using both of those things today. So when it comes to essential oils, essential oils are another form of plant, right? So we take that high volatile oil and then we use it to activate our limbic system. It goes straight in through our nose and activates things in different ways, especially we can use them from that emotional standpoint, but we can also use them physically, topically to help a lot in an acute situation. And a lot of times when we're in that acute situation, we have shock, right? We're in this like, so the adrenaline is pumping. We need to know what to do next. So essential oils are this great kind of like combination of the herbal medicine and, and essential oils coming together, helping our physical body and emotional body to deal with an acute situation uh, or accident. So I want to talk a little bit about homeopathy and I brought some today. What did I do with my, oh, here it is. Um, so homeopathy, what is homeopathy? Homeopathy is, it comes from a plant, mineral, um, or we also have nosos, which come from like a bacteria. And what happens is they take that particular matter and then it's, we call it succussing. It's reduced, 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 to this like energetic form. And then it's made into either a tablet or liquid. So how, what, that's like just kind of the basis of how it's made, but how do we use it? So how it was originally invented was by Hahnemann and what, how it was studied. So there's lots of different kind of like um, trials about how things worked. And so say for instance, you, when you're cutting an onion, you know, you have this like your runny eyes or your eyes are watering, a runny nose. So when we have someone in that situation, when that occurrence then happens in that acute form, that's what the remedy that we use. So it's, we, it's proven, it's, we call it a proving, where someone has, has the action, then we can use it. So if you were having allergies and then you needed to, you were having runny eyes, runny nose, you would use that same remedy to help. Does that make sense? And so I'm gonna be talking about those remedies today. And they're a really great thing to add to your first aid kit. Um, of course, the, you probably wouldn't have one as an extensive as this, right? So this is, this is a, my doctor like acute one, right? So I have all the homeopathic remedies, but I've picked ones today in their smaller form here for you to add to your kit. And these are the highlighted ones for acute situations. Mm -hmm. And I'll be talking about each of those today. So just kind of wanted to give you that intro to homeopathy. One thing that I like about it is it's really easy to take anywhere you go. 
because it's really lightweight and it's in a tablet form and it works really, really quickly in that acute situation. It's really good for all ages, kids, adults, geriatrics. It doesn't have any contraindications. So it's really easy to use and I'll talk about the different forms of that as we move on. Okay, so that's your new thing to learn about <laughs> this week. Yay. Yay for homeopathy, yay. yay. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, so the, um, the, on your, I think that's page 10, you might have a little bit of a different page number, either nine or 10 for you, the first page where it says the natural first aid kit. Page nine. Page nine, okay, great, thank you. Um, so we're gonna be talking today about making your first aid kit. And so the first step really is, I would say number one is to get out the kit that you have now at home, right? You take it out, like hopefully everybody has a kit at home that they, if not, this is a great time to create one. But you wanna make sure that you have the components of your first aid kit that you would need, right? Like tweezers, a band-aid, um, you know, alcohol, all those things for that acute situation and see what pieces you're missing. It's important as a community for us to have the things to help others in our environment. Also, if you're not trained in CPR and that's something that you're interested in, you know, I think the studies have shown that most of the time when we're in that acute situation if someone knows CPR, that's when we can have the best results for somebody having a heart attack. So that's kind of like my plug for CPR. It's really important um, to be trained in it or have someone in your family that's trained, right? To be able to know those acute things. So it doesn't necessarily have to go hand in hand with using, of course, a natural first aid kit, but that's an important part. Or just even taking a first aid class, right? So you know some things. Because we're not going to be covering those details today. We're going to be talking about making the kit. <laughs> so um, I put a little resource here for you about where to buy some of the things that we're going to be using today. And we're going to be meeting the fresh plants. So you can also grow them in your garden. And I mentioned in a couple of the other classes, if you're interested in taking some plants home, please let us know. And also like cuttings and starting some things in your own garden. You know, we're moving towards the end of the season now. So not maybe the best time, but we also have seeds. So you could take some seeds like echinacea seeds, um, but we want to help support you in creating your own garden. And then you can also come back in the spring as we're getting started. We have lots of plants. Tulsi is a great one right now. You could dig up some and take it home. It really needs to be planted like immediately. But if you're interested, please let us know. Okay, so I've set, I, what I did is I made this kit into categories. So you'll see, first it has your herbal tincture. So we're gonna be making some tinctures today and I'm gonna be talking about how to make one. Then a salves, balms, and creams. So those are great for topical use. So tinctures, just to back up to tinctures, we can use them orally, right? Like as an immediate thing for pain, but we can also use them topically and they're great for wound cleaning. Um, you know, alcohol is always good, but when we add the herbs in, it helps uh, immediately reduce bacteria and infection. So we're gonna be making one of those today. And then also essential oils I put in here for you as well. And we're gonna be learning about those and then homeopathic remedies. And then other, so there's an other section, and these are other things I recommend adding to that toolkit for specific reasons. So I'm gonna be talking about all of these today. So when you're formulating your kit, we're gonna be making some of these things today, which is great. You're gonna have those levels already created. And then also it's e gonna be easy for you to start getting, creating the kit on your own. I've tried to keep it very simple. Right, so it's not you're not gonna have to like buy eight thousand things to make the kit, and of course you might not want to buy everything at once. Maybe there's something that's you're focusing on for you and your family. Um, okay, so let's turn to the next page and of talking about using the natural first aid kit. So I, what I did is I made this into sections about the main times. In, when you're having an acute situation, when you're gonna need to use it, like a cut, a burn, etc., and then what to use. So when you make that first aid toolkit, you can go back to it like, okay, I have a burn, what am I gonna be using for it? So for minor scrapes and abrasions, of course, you all know what that is. That could be, you know, maybe you're out in the garden working and you brush up against a rock and you're bleeding. Of course, the first thing you wanna do is always clean it out, right? So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make a tincture that we would use as a wash. And we're gonna do that with calendula. And so um, you all have calendula flowers on your table. So we're gonna be using those. And so right now we don't have any fresh calendula. It's all out for this season, but it's a really easy, you might know it's like the, um, it's very common. It's the beautiful orange purple flower. And let's see if I can pull up quickly a picture. Some plants we don't have in their fresh form right now. 
I wanted to make sure I could show you. I'll pull it up in a minute. Let's see if I can find it. Here we go. Yeah. So it's the beautiful orange flower. Super easy to grow in your garden. Can everybody see that? You can always come up and look later too, but really easy to grow in your garden and has lots and lots of benefits. One for first aid, that's a great one. You can use it topically and internally and we're also gonna be talking about it in the pain and inflammation one on September 18th. And I love calendula, one, it makes your garden look so beautiful, it's really easy to pick and grow and then it has lots of uses. So you can see, so when we're drying something, we use for the calendula, we use the, the flower and you would, so you would pick the flowers and then dry them. And a great way is to just pick up an easy dehydrator. You can also just go straight into fresh form. So um, this is what we're gonna be making. So this was made from the fresh flower. So this is calendula in its fresh form and then the, tinc the alcohol, the tincture has been added to it. And then also you could make an infused oil. We're gonna be making a salve today. So for an infused oil, this was a solar, we have two methods. This is a solar method. And so what happens is you put the calendula in the jar and then you fill it with your oil and then just put it in the sun. Like there's one right on the deck over there and you let it be there for a couple weeks and then it solar infuses and then you strain it. Super easy. We're gonna be making the stovetop method today for our sap. So I'm gonna teach you how to do that because it's really great to be able to do solar, right? But we don't always have the time. We don't always have the sun. So, um, and also we don't always have the plant matter. So I'm gonna be teaching you how to use dried plant matter today because I think that's important as you're building your kits. So um, that's what we're doing with that. So let's talk about how we are gonna be using calendula for a wound. So let's say you have a, a cut and I would say probably not too deep of a, a gash, you know, not like a half an inch is probably too deep where you need to go to the emergency room or have some urgent care for some stitches. I can do my medical office procedures, but I don't want to do any stitching here at the farm. So <laughs> don't see me, I would send you out. Um, uh, but I, we do learn that in medical school on pig's feet. And then we do learn it on people eventually later too. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always interesting interesting you're like wow really this is how we're gonna learn how to do it but the pig uh, texture of the skin is very similar to humans so it's really easy to do the stitching <laughs> okay so anyway <laughs> um, so to make your so you're gonna make the tincture and we're gonna do that together and to make a, an actual uh, antiseptic or solution for the wound I put the recipe here for you so you would take five drops of calendula tincture. So we're gonna, so that, that's what this is gonna be. You're gonna make your own. And you're gonna add five drops of Hypericum perforatum. That's St. John's wort if you wanna write that in there next to your notes there. Sometimes I, the Latin, we really wanna start learning about referring to herbs from the Latin way. So sometimes you'll see that I don't put the common name in here for you so you can start learning. And um, then you would add one cup of water to so clean the wound and then bandage it up. So say for instance, you're gonna do fresh, we're gonna make that now, but say you didn't have it. So this is St. John's wort in its dried form. So you could make a tincture from the dried form super easily. And then you'd have this, so you'd have the tincture strained out of the herb and then made a combination together. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so let's do, let's make a tincture first. So this is gonna be step one of your first aid kit, using it for cleansing. And then I'll talk about the other uses of how we can use for wound cleansing. Okay, so you're gonna take your small jar that's on your table, the empty one that looks like this. You're gonna take your packet of calendula flowers and you're going to add it to your jar. The whole packet. The, the whole, whole packet, yes, thank you. The whole packet. And then we're gonna pass around the Everclear. And I will be doing that up here so I can show you what that looks like. So you're gonna take your calendula flowers that are either fresh or dried and you want to place them into your jar <laughs> and when you're filling up your jar you don't want it to be really really tight you want it to be kind of loose so that the alcohol can move around the jar right so I don't know how many you have in your little packet there but I think I guesstimated the right amount <laughs> <laughs> yes. right, no, please do not drink the Everclear. <laughs> okay, so now you have your calendula in your jar. Okay, then you're gonna take your the Everclear that's being passed around. 
and you're gonna fill it up to cover the herb. Okay? And what I like to do is kind of fill it up to the first available rim on the jar and then use a, uh, your tongue depressor. You each have a little tongue depressor and you can use it to push the matter down underneath the alcohol. Okay? Uh, Dr. Lulu, can yes. I fill all the way to the top? The rim. For, to that like yeah. that rim, yeah. You just want to cover um, the plant matter, and then do it to that first rim, okay? And then you're going to put your lid onto the jar, and then shake it up a little bit, <laughs> so everything is mixed around. <laughs> And then you'll be able to see if you need to add a little bit more alcohol. You're like, okay, well, I need to add a little bit more. So you can add a little bit more. You always, the key is you always want to make sure that all the plant matter is covered because you don't want any oxygen that could be in the jar to then activate that plant matter that's exposed because it will mold. Okay, so um, it's really great to make sure it's pushed down in there. Okay. So there you go, it looks like an amazing science experiment, right? <laughs> yes, doctor, I have eyeballs ready to go, right? So yeah, here's your calendula. So what you wanna do is now you want to label it. So take the labels that are on your station, write calendula, tincture, and the date. And you should have stickers in your pen that you're talking And so, Four weeks from today, you could start, you could strain this and it would be ready, okay? You can leave it longer if you like, but I would suggest, you know, if you're making your first aid kit, you know, just go ahead. And you can see well, that wasn't really very many flowers, right? It's super easy for us to do. And, and this will last you a long time for wound clean, like cleaning. It's not going to go bad. Um, and the way to strain it, so I'm gonna just demo that so it'll be really easy for you guys to do it, even though mine won't be ready. <laughs> Okay, so for the straining method, is everybody good? Do they have any questions about that particular process there? Yes. Just one quick question. Yeah. Um, I have a 10 year old. And yes. So if I use this with alcohol and, and put it on her wound, she will never do it again, I don't think. <laughs> well, you know, that's the cleaning process of wound healing, though. Okay. Yeah, you know. I don't know if there's another way you can yeah, do so, it. Yeah, so, and I will talk about that, yes. Okay. So we can use so, it in a gauze, um, and so we can do that. But yeah, straight alcohol, of course, is very, you know, uh, <laughs> Can make someone angry, <laughs> right? Yes, right, yeah, they might be not too happy. Um, so a way that you can do it is you could take some gauze. This is not this is cheesecloth, but it's not gauze. But um, so you would cut a square of the gauze. Just, you know, you probably have gauze in your first aid kits at home or you should add it to it. You know, that white gauze that comes in those sealed packets. So you would take that off, then you would apply the calendula tincture to the gauze and then press it over the wound. If it is a, a wound that's dirty, you're gonna have to clean it out as the parent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like I had an a, a accident when I was, I think I was five. Um, I was riding my bicycle, and you remember those old curbs? Uh -huh. They're black, those like they were made out of like the pavement. And so I was, I lived in Atlanta, and I was riding down this super steep hill, and I got like, super scared so i put on my brakes really fast and i flew woo -hoo -hoo, straight over the handlebars like right into the curb and i had a huge gash i mean it was i, I still have a big scar from it. it was probably like two inches by one inch and that's so i had to go to the emergency room and i remember the, for the them cleaning it out like up to this day i remember screaming bloody murder my parents don't remember of course but i remember so yes it will you know like it's a, it's gonna happen um but if you if it's a, just an abrasion and not a deep cut you could just use gauze and so you would take the tincture apply it to the gauze and then you could do that because you know tincture, alcohol is not the best <laughs> feeling yes so when you use this you just Take it out and use a gauze? Yeah, so I'm gonna show you. So what you would do is you would strain it. So you have a little, um, once it's done, after four, at the minimum of four weeks, you take a container and a strainer. I like to use a, a metal, right? Um, easy to use. You could also use cheesecloth for your straining. And you're just gonna dump it over. Of course, it's not gonna be quite as strong. I could have used the other one. Um, and then use something to press all of the liquid out of the matter. Right, and so then, this is your leftover, <laughs> and then you put that into a clean jar. This is not a clean jar. But you would pour it back into a clean jar, and you can see it's already changed color, even just from that moment. It's probably gonna be pretty bright yellow when you, or yellow when you strain it. 
Um, and so then you would relabel it and it would say calendula tincture for wound cleaning and put the date. And then that's gonna last you for a long time. I mean, this could last you for like years and it's not gonna go bad. Cool. Yes. How long do you need to let it uh, sit before you start using At least four weeks. Four weeks. Yeah, so a minimum of four weeks, but you could do longer. If you forgot it, it's not gonna matter. One thing with straining, I don't know if you could see this, but it has some pieces, because I wasn't like that, you know, I wasn't that particular. You don't wanna have any pieces of matter really like left over in it. So you can use um, that method I just showed you of straining through here. Then what you could do is you could do one more step with cheesecloth and just squeeze it out so it's secure. Because you don't really, especially if you're doing wound cleaning, you don't wanna have any matter like in there. So a great thing you can do too um, is you could use a dropper and I'll, I'll get one and show you, but you could use a, um, a dropper to get it out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> My lovely assistant. <laughs> yeah, Vanna. Yeah, 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 yeah. uh, so you could use a dropper and, and get it out of your jar like that. Or you could even put it um, in the jars that you have on your table. You could make a tincture like that. And that's a great way. One thing is that the things that we're making this week or, the, or today <laughs> um, are in a clear container, some things. And when you strain it, for your medicine cabinet, you wanna put it in those brown jars that you have on your table. Because this light can go through here and you want it to be dark for medicine, as dark as possible, um, and, and not plastic. So you wanna store things in glass in a dark container. You can do buy the brown bottles. They also have blue and green. So if you're like into colors, you, or you can buy the colors, but don't get the clear. So you would wanna change this out. But these are inexpensive for that first stage. Um, and you can, once you have it made in the form there, you wanna take it home and just put it in a nice dark place and let it just hang out. Like, you know, have a little cabinet in your basement or wherever you're doing your medicine making where things stay dark, where they're not, the sun doesn't come in. Okay? Cool. Great, so that is our first part of our toolkit. Super easy. Cool, cool. Yay, right. <laughs> um, okay, so we're going back to the page here, yes. So for this, yes, we don't put this in the sun. This is supposed to be in a nice yeah. dark place while it's fermenting. Right. <laughs> and then we're, we're changing it to the new jar, which is dark and still again in the dark to, to preserve it. Yes, that's a great question. So when it's in its medicine making form like this, right? This is a bigger jar of what you just made. This one has been for fermenting <laughs> since uh, June 25th. So it's, you know, it's, it's over, it's time, but it's fine. You can let them sit in here for a long, long time. You know, it's like canning. Um, and so once it's strained from this form, so it sits in a dark place, it's chilling out, making the medicine, then it's done, then you strain it and you put that back into your medicine cabinet or toolkit in a dark place. So, you know, you could get like a, a metal box or a plastic box or a tool shed, whatever you're gonna use for your toolbox. Um, you know, they have lots of, you know, cabbies, you know, the ones that are used for like fishing, those are kind of a good one. Anything that has little pockets, you wanna have it somewhere that's really easy to access that everyone in your family knows about, right? Like, okay, this is where the first aid kit is. This is where we're going to keep it. This is where we can access it. Um, and so you're, you clean, or you can clean the wound like I made here. You can use a solution of witch hazel. Do you all know witch hazel? So we're going to be making something today with witch hazel. Super easy to buy at the store. It's actually, um, things have been a little bit hard to find. I had to go to like four stores to find witch hazel. Um, because you want to have witch hazel, witch hazel that doesn't have anything added to it. So I had to go to round, like you'll see it now they have, I can't remember the brand, but it has a little red label, but they add a bunch of things to it. You don't want that. You just want pure witch hazel, pure alcohol. You can make your own, <laughs> but I didn't, <laughs> but you could. You can buy a witch hazel by itself and make the tincture just like we just did. But yeah, so witch hazel in its pure form. So you would take a fourth a cup of witch hazel and add six to eight drops of tea tree oil. So witch hazel and tea tree together are like the antibacterial powerhouse. So we're gonna be learning about tea tree in one of our, um, in the essential oils today. So tea tree is really great for using as an antiseptic. It's been long used for like, you know, brushing teeth and, and using as an antifungal. So you can use that in combination. So you would take a fourth a cup of witch hazel and then you would add your oils, your essential oils, together and you could use that as antiseptic. So if you didn't want to wait 
you know, for the tincture that you just made and you wanna go ahead and make something for your first aid kit, you could go ahead and make this and put it in there right away. So I made you some, some kind of some different ideas of go ahead and uh, go ahead and start it. You can also, if it has a splinter, so does everybody know how to remove a splinter? Yeah, maybe you haven't they had one it. in a while, right? <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna demonstrate, but yeah, so uh, when you have, so the thing about a splinter is sometimes it can be hard to get it out, right? Especially if it's really deep. Um, so soaking the wound first in Epsom salt. So you can either use a bowl, um, like fill the bowl with warm water with some Epsom salts. Like so you, hand is most common, right? Hand and feet, and, or your butt if you've been sliding on like a piece of wood. <laughs> um, and so filling it up and soaking with the Epsom salt and water, that will make it really soft. Then you can take those tweezers from your first aid kit and pinch the skin and move that splinter out. Um, always make sure that you're using, like if you're using tools from your first aid kit, you. Uh, clean them off before you put them back into the first aid kit, right? So if you're using a metal tweezer, clean it off with alcohol, your calendula tincture that we just made, and then put it back into your kit. Um, you could also use Arnica Montana. So Mar Arnica comes in a couple forms. So I wrote it up here in your herb form. So you can use Arnica. We don't grow it here at the farm. It is a, um, it's more of a desert plant. We tried, but it didn't do very well because it rains a lot here. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna try it again and maybe next year. So Arnica is not for internal use. I made a star here. It's only for topical use. And so you can use it in its herb form. You might have seen it at the store. You can buy it in a cream. It'll say Arnica cream. And also you can use it, uh, she's got some back there. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and you can also use it in its homeopathic form. Um, so our, oh, she's got both over there. Look at her, she's all prepared. <laughs> um, so Arnica in its, here it is in its homeopathic form. So when you use it homeopathically, um, I put in the dose here 30C. So homeopathics range from 6C to 15C to 30C, and then they go to these larger quantities of uh, 200, 100, 200, and then they go to M's. <laughs> so as a layperson and used in your first aid kit, you wanna be using a very low dosage, like a, a six, a 15, or a 30. Okay, so you wanna write that down because you might not always be able to find a 30. So six, 15, or 30. Those are the three that you can purchase. Arnica is, so when we use Arnica, it's for bruising, and um, a meat, like, an, like you have a sprain right away, that pain, that's your acute. So say, you know, you've had a wound, you're like, okay, am I uh, having pain from that wound? It's an acute wound. That's when you wanna take the Arnica or orally, okay? You can also make a compress. So say you, you clean it out with your tincture and then say this is Arnica, it's not, but I'm gonna demo it like it is. <laughs> and you had fresh or dried. So you would take this matter, you would put it into a little bowl. Okay, so you're making your little bowl here and you could add a little water or something to make it into, or you can do it straight, but you want, sometimes you could, if you're out in the wild, you can spit, right? It's like a, it's called a spit poultice. Um, and so you would then take that and you would put it over your wound and then you would take your little gauze and then wrap it up. Okay, so this is for an acute wound where you're having pain directly on the site. So say like you um, hit your elbow on a tree, you're bleeding and, and it's hurting a lot. Perfect time to use Arnica as a topical for cream or you could take the homeopathic. So when I hike, I always have the Arnica in my backpack um, or if I'm doing some adventure because I'm a little accident prone. <laughs> and um, I'm, you know, I always go, especially when I'm doing mountain biking, I'm always like, doing something to like you know not like a big accident but you know some kind of scrape <laughs> and so that's fine it's i call it as my like you know a test that i was outside like doing something i have evidence <laughs> yeah the badge of honor so that's a super easy way and lots of herbs so you could use you could do one with arnica um, you could also do comfrey so this is comfrey we're going to talk about comfrey you could also do it with calendula you could do the same thing with calendula. You could, if you didn't have the tincture and you have fresh flower or dried in your garden, you could easily make a poultice straight with that too. So there's lots of herbs we use as a poultice. Um, and so a poultice is really, it's not gonna be like long-term. It's for an acute right away. And then once it dries, you just take it off. Chamomile is another really good one. Chamomile is used for inflammation. 
really easy to grow and you can also buy it in a dried form too. So I like uh, the top ones for inflammation, for helping with pain. So we talked about Arnica, chamomile is really good and also Calypto is not directly for pain but it will help. St. John's wort, um, this is for nerve pain. So you know when you have that injury, acute injury and you have like zinging from the injury, um, that's when you could make a poultice from the St. John's wort. You could, and you could also take the homeopathic remedy. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's another really good one to have homeopathic in your first aid kit. Okay, so the calendula and the saint, you can choose, you can, you can do the spit thing if you need to. Yeah, these ones are okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you never, when you're doing a spit poultice, you never want to like swallow the right. herb, right? But you can also, you don't have to do the, a spit poultice is when you kind of like chew it in your mouth, yeah. but you can make a compress without that. So you could do, um, you could tear up the herb like I just did and you could add warm water to it and apply it. Yeah, you don't have to do a spit poultice. You could just do, and that's really called like a compress where you're doing it for a longer period of time. So those are some easy ways to do that. Okay, and then um, if the wound is painful, okay, so now you've had this wound, <laughs> you're realizing you have some pain, then we're gonna bring on some herbs to actually help more with the pain. So uh, we have our three herbs here. Can everybody see those? Particularis, valerian, and kava kava. These are your pain herbs. So these are going to be taken orally when you have pain. And I put on here for you two to three dropperfuls of valerian officinalis, which is valerian. Tincture to a glass of water and drink every three hours till the pain subsides. So this is an acute remedy, right? Valerian, this is not where you're gonna take it and go drive around the, the block or something. This is a, gonna make you very sedated. <laughs> so these three herbs are strong herbs, particularis, valerian, and kava. Um, you can buy these in their dried form and you can easily make these tinctures and put them into your cabinet. We do that here at the farm. We do grow valerian, which we'll pass around. So this is valerian. We talked about using valerian in the sleep one. If you attended the sleep one, you might remember. So it's a sed sedative. You can pass around a couple of pieces down the rows there. Um, so valerian, we use the root. This is it's in its fresh plant form. So it looks a little bit different. Um, it has these beautiful pink and white flowers and um, has a very strong smell to it. We'll pass around. Um, this is it in dried form. You can pass around um, the dried form. I don't think you can smell it really from the fresh one. If you are gonna smell it in the dried form, please just uh, don't breathe into the jar. Just breathe in, but not out. <laughs> um, and so you can easily buy that dried form and make your own tincture for sleep. So a lot of times when you have an injury, you, it's hard to sleep, right? And so this is when you, this Valeria is really good. Particularis, um, I, I mentioned I think a couple classes ago I had a really bad injury uh, burn um, and Particularis is one of the main herbs I used. I use a combination of things but uh, for pain. Really, really good for pain. Um, and so Valerian is good for pain and sleep and then Kava really helps you to relax. Like you know when you have an injury and you're stressed <laughs> from the injury? You're like, oh, you're like kind of on edge. Like what am I gonna do? Your, your nervous system, like if you have that adrenaline rush, Kava is great for that, okay? So again, just to emphasize, these are not things you would wanna go drive around after <laughs> taking, right? This is when you're relaxing, you've had an acute injury, and not, not like a small wound, <laughs> right? Not like a scrape, okay? All right, so that's your basics for minor scrapes and abrasions. Do people want me to pass around the homeopathic remedies so you can look at them? I did bring them today. Sure. Okay, we'll pass them around. Um, we'll just sanitize them as they come back up, it's fine. Um, so to use them, um, these are ones that you can, you can see the different forms as they're coming around and I'll just put some into the container so you can see them. They come, they're these little pellets. Um, and so you would take, get the pellets. This, these are nice because they have little caps. Um, and then you take off the cap and you never want to touch a homeopathic remedy because it's an energetic form of medicine. And so you want to put it right under the tongue and let it dissolve. You wanna take them away from caffeine and away from peppermint. Those are the two things that, because those are also remedies, and so they interact with those specific plants. So, um, like I said, for the this one you would take Arnica, 
three small pellets under the tongue every 30 minutes, okay? So you would put three small pellets into this container and then boom, under the tongue, okay? So I'll pass this around. You can kind of like see what they look like. One thing with um, homeopathic remedies, you'll see that they have an expiration on them. They really don't expire. So you'll see that some of mine going around are expired, but that's because they have to put an expiration date on something. It's like, it's required, but they, they, unless they, I mean, they don't, they're just made from a sugar pellet with the energy in it. I usually don't keep them for like a long period of time just because the energy can shift, but it, I think they have like two or three years on there. Anyway, they don't really expire, but you will know, like if you had it in your cabinet for, you know, what I would recommend going through that first aid toolkit, like once a year, right? Like, okay, maybe I need to fresh things up. How are my bandages? Maybe you didn't use anything. Maybe you need to redo it, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's talk about, the next thing we're gonna be talking about and um, is, actually, I think I'll, let's make the salve now. I wanna make our salve um, because I wanna make sure, I wanna get it going while we're talking. So let's turn to the page that says uh, first aid formula, yes. So the one I bought in the store says 30C, yours says 30K. Is that the same thing? It's a little bit different, but you could they're interchangeable. It's so those the K's are the European version. So they're yeah, so the K's have a little bit of a different way that they work, but they're interchangeable. You probably won't see K's here. That's like a, something that I buy. Yeah. But sometimes if you can't find a C, you can interchange it with the K. Good question. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna make on uh, every turn to page. Uh, first aid formula, okay? So we're gonna be making now, we're gonna be making, um, I'm gonna show you how to make the St. John's Wort salve. So salves are great for uh, cuts and wounds and wound healing. One thing about a salve is that when you put something on top of a wound, you can think of it as sealing the cut. So you don't want to use that over something that has the possibility of infection. Like you wanna wait till it's like sealing over, <laughs> right? And so especially comfrey, which is this plant here, we'll pass around. Uh, the other two, the calendula and the St. John's wort, so the hypericum is the St. John's wort. Symphytum officinale is comfrey and calendula officinalis is the calendula. Those are the three herbs we're using today. This is the comfrey. It is such an amazing, powerful, fast, wound healer that it is contraindicated for an, an open wound. Because if there's any sign of infection in there, it'll just seal it right up, <laughs> and then you'll have this infection sealed underneath your wound, or the inside your skin, and then that's not a good plan, right? Nobody wants that. Um, you could pass those around. So what I want you to do is to, them rip them? yes, rip them, and I want you to feel the texture of the plant matter, okay? Yeah, you can take a few. Leave me some, yeah. but yes, <laughs> but yes. Can I leave you with one? So uh, no, I need more than that. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, yep. that's probably good. Okay. <clears throat> yes, so again, to be clear about that, this salve is used after you have that sealing over of the wound, or you could also do one where you left out the comfrey. So you could make two different ones if you wanted to. Um, all right, so let's move on to be making so we're gonna, I'm gonna be using, I put in your instructions here, the two methods. So the one method is that I talked about earlier. This is your solar infused method, okay? This is one where you put the herb and the oil in and you put it on your sunny deck for a month, okay? That's method number one, super easy. Method number two is your double boiler method. That's what I'm gonna show you how to make today. This is really great because you can make it all year round um, and, it, and you can make it really easily with dried herb. I'm gonna make a combination of fresh and dried today because I wanna show you how to use the fresh. And I, we didn't have any um, St. John's wort available at our farm. We don't have any right now. We have some fresh, but it hasn't even flowered yet. So we didn't have any, but that's fine. Okay, so um, I put on here, you'll see the salve can be used for burns rashes, cuts, or wounds, but not an open wound if, if infection is possible. I put on your parts <laughs> instead of the actual amount because you can change that up to make, and you'll see that a lot with herbal formulas, we just use parts because you can take, because one thing is that they have a different weight 
<laughs> root and leaf and fresh matter. So we're gonna do parts today and I'm just gonna use like, a, 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 this is a half cup size, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna do a half a cup for each thing, okay? And um, all different parts of plant matter weigh a different amount so you can adjust that. You could also add some of the essential oils post and you could add any of these here to help with wound healing. Like if you're looking for something, peppermint is gonna be, I'm gonna talk about, this would be if you're um, more fun analgesic, right? If you want something that's gonna, uh, you know, when you put like a Ben Gay, right? Um, tea tree antiseptic, lavender is great for burns. Eucalyptus more for opening up the respiratory pack passages. Citronella for your bugs. Right, so you have some, you can make this salve kind of like your, uh, what you're gearing it towards in your first aid kit. But this is a great, just plain one, straight up, right? Okay, you can also add the essential oils after too. Let's say for instance, you make the salve and it's in its form in your toolkit and you apply some to a wound, you could mix it a little bit. Um, you could take, you know, like a spoonful with your tongue depressor into a little container and then add your essential oils to that. Does that make sense? And so then you could be like, okay, I had a burn, I'm gonna take this salve and then I'm gonna add a little bit of lavender, which is great for burns. You could add just like one or two drops to that little mixture and then apply it straight to the wound. So it's really, you don't, have, that's one thing about making a, a salve plain <laughs> with no essential oils is that it's easy to add in other things, okay? All right, so I'm gonna turn this on here. Um, and I'll collect everybody's jars. We're going to do that. At yes. Day, right. Yeah. So you have an empty jar on your table and we're going to fill them up for you yeah. with a little bit of the salve um, because it's going to be hot. We're going to do it later. I'm going to show you the whole process. But right now we're going to do the making and then it's going to, during the rest of the class, it's going to sit in here and it's going to brew, right? It's going to uh, get all the essential oils from the plant matter into the oil and then we're going to strain it. So I'm going to show you the whole process. And what I, you can also do this with a small crock pot. So this is a double boiler method. Mm -hmm. And you can do a small crock pot, super easy. You can just put it on your um, counter at home on the lowest, lowest setting, and you can let it sit for a couple hours. A lot of people will do that, it's called the crock pot method. But I like the double boiler because I don't forget about it. I can wash it <laughs> and then it's easy. Okay, so one part of dried hypericum, uh, perforatum, and so St. John's word, let's talk about plant. And I think I have a picture of it here that I already tabbed to show you. So St. John's wort, here's a picture of it. You can see the yellow flowers. And I can pass around. Would you, would you like me to pass around pictures? Is that better for everybody? Or can you see things up here? Okay, I'll pass it around. Um, so St. John's wort, it, and the, the reason that they call it perforatum is because when you hold the leaf up to the light, it has these little tiny holes that you can see. So it's like a perforated leaf. So hypericum perforatum. So essential oils, plants in general, sometimes they're named after the way the plant actually is, which does help us, right? <laughs> I don't know Latin. I wasn't um, trained uh, in Latin or took Latin in high school or anything like that, but I had to learn all the Latin you know, words for the names of the herbs. So anyway, it has these beautiful little yellow flowers and um, it's really easy to identify in your herb garden. There is a ornamental form, which you might have seen, and the flowers are more like the size of kind of like, you know, like a golf ball. They're or maybe even bigger. So that's not the form. This is like tiny, tiny little flowers. So you want to make sure again that you're, when you're planting it in your garden, you're using the correct Latin form. So we'll pass that around. Okay, so St. John's wort is great for wound healing. It's wonderful for that nerve zingy. That's how I would remember it when you're writing things down in your little notebook, I would write down next to it, nerves. When you think about hypericum, think about the nervous system, a nerve wound in injury, both the herbal form, which you can use. Now, when we talked about this herb, I don't know if you remember in anxiety and depression, if you were in here for the first class, this is our herb for depression. Okay, so when we use it top of internally, herbs have a different way that they work. Um, and so, not always, but St. John's Word is used uh, in an internal form for depression and used topically for nerve pain and he wound healing, okay? And um, so we're gonna take one part of that. Make 
sure I don't have it too high here. Oh yeah, a little bit too high. You want you don't want it to be boiling. <laughs> you want it to be simmering. <laughs> so I just turned it down. Um, when you do a double boil method, there we go. Um, you, you want it to be this like low simmer, so it's heating up the plant matter, not burning it, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so we have uh, one part of the hypericum in our formula to help with the nerves. Then we have uh, one part of dried symphytum officinale. Now I'm gonna use the fresh because we have it, but I also got the, and I'm gonna pass these around for you too. Um, I got some of the dried form so that you could see it super easy um you can use it internally too but it has a different way that it's um a different focus when we take it internally it's for the liver system <clears throat> it's also a wound healer and for bones broken bones okay so um when you use a fresh matter and you're going to combine it with your dry plant matter i'm just going to tear it apart and put it in there so again i'm going to use one part you could use, since we're, it's the fresh matter, I'll probably use like two parts of fresh because if you're gonna use a combination of fresh and dried, it has a different rise than dried, but it's a lot smaller. Now when, you, when it came around, did you feel how sticky it was when you tore it apart? So you can think about that as the thing that it's doing on your skin. It's going, <laughs> right? And so that stickiness is what we want in the, in the plant. It smells a little like cucumber. Yeah, it does. It has a cucumber and it grows like a weed. <laughs> so if you put it in your garden, it, it, yeah, really make sure it has a lot of space. We have one space for it. It really is great for all the other plants in your garden. So it will grow really prolifically. And then you can make a tea out of it. We call it like a, a compost tea. So you take a bucket of water and you uh, put the fresh comfrey into it and then let it sit overnight and then you can pour it all over your plant uh, you know all the soil underneath all your plants and it will give them nutrients it's very 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 high in nutrients so another thing you can take it internally for is for nutrients so um, it'll give nitrogen and vitamins and minerals to your plants so yeah really important plant to have in your garden to help with other plants also if you plant it at the root of a tree that's having difficulties, it will also help uh, with a symbiotic relationship. Okay, so we're gonna put that in there. My hands are all sticky now, <laughs> which is a good thing. Do you want to one? No, it's good. Okay, so I'm tearing that up. I'm gonna put that in there. I'm not using the stem of the fresh. You could, but I, I want it. I don't need to. Um, and when it's dried, it does have the, the part of the plant. It's a very big leaf, right? You could see that. <laughs> okay, then, so we have, now we have something to help with the skin, the tissue of the skin, the fibrinogen to activate the fibers of the skin. Then we also have something for the nerve, nerves. And now we're going to put in the calendula, which is gonna help with the inflammation of the actual wound. So you know when you have a scrape, it gets all red, right? Mm -hmm. That's part, that's a nat natural part of our inflama inflammatory process, the white blood cells. We want that part. That's the calor, the C-A-L-O-R, um, or the rubor, I'm sorry. Um, but we want, you want that redness, but you don't want that redness to last forever <laughs> because that can be a sign of infection, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then I got one part of the calendula flower, so I put all that in there. I'm gonna mix it up. This is the fun part, right? This is where you get to be the, the scientist in your lab. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to take my oil. I like to use jojoba oil because it has a really good quality for the skin, but you can use another oil. You could use olive oil. You could use fractionated coconut oil. You could use sweet almond oil, lots of different things. If you wanna pour the, um, that little bug in there. <laughs> Could I have a little Oh, I think I have one up here somewhere. Yeah, I have a little, oh no, the a bigger one. The one to the right. The largest one to the right. That one. Yeah, that one. I need to save some <laughs> because we're, I don't want to use it all. Okay, I'm going to pass that back to you now. <laughs> we need to use that later. I don't want to use it all. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take your oil and you're going to pour it over your plant matter. And I'll bring this around so you can all see what it looks like. 
This is when we can use a mirror. I know, where's our mirror? Next year. Good idea. <laughs> Good idea, yeah. Okay, so then you want to mix it in the bowl, right? So all everything is mixed together. And I'm going to bring it around and show you. I'm going to put some more oil in it too. I used to work um, in kitchens for a lot. I was a caterer. I had my own baking company. So my hands have no feeling because they were burned so much. So it's okay. <laughs> it's okay if I carry it around. It's not going <laughs> to So you can see. They're just, they're just not very sensitive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can see this is the uh, crock pot method, and um, I'm going to put a tiny bit more oil in it. <laughs> yeah, when I uh, had to have my fingerprints done uh, for my doctor's license, um, they, I had to do it three times. They said they, that I had no fingerprints. And then I had to go and have them digitally made. Oh my goodness! Yeah. So I, I'm not like making it up. I really don't have like it's from just working in the the cooking field. And also as a physician, you're washing your hands all the time, and so it just washes off that outer layer of skin. <laughs> um, okay. So you want to mix it up. We get all that matter. Um, and add a little bit more oil. You want the oil to be enough oil so that all the plant matter is covered. Okay. All right, then you want to make sure it's simmering. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit. Okay, then you want to cover it because you want the essential oils of the plant that are evaporating to go back in. So I'm going to cover it up. Then we're going to let that chill out. So let's set a timer. Um, let's see, what time is it now? It is 10, 13. Okay, we're fine. We'll just do it like later after the we break. We have a break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a break, break after the break. We'll do it. So, so about an hour or something? I would do it at least an hour. It's slow. You could do it longer, but you want you don't want it to get cooked down too much. But at least at least a minimum of thirty minutes, to, and I usually do an hour. For this okay, we're on. Clock yeah. is on. Yay! Thank you. So I put on here slowly heat for thirty to sixty minutes, and check frequently to be sure the oil is not overheating. So overheating, you know, stirring it, and you don't want your water to be boiling too much because then the steam is going to come out and then go into your water, your oil. Water and oil don't mix, right? So you don't want that to happen. So low cooking, okay? Um, and then we're going to strain it and I'll talk about that next phase when we do the strain. So you're going to see the whole process today. I, I know that we're not, you're not making it at your station, but we didn't, <laughs> we didn't have enough of those, but you will be able to go home with it today. Oh, that was, this is my book. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, great. So we started, okay, we've got a little bit more. So let's go back to where we were talking about using the natural first aid kit. Okay, I think that was on your page maybe 11. We're gonna go back to trauma. Okay, I'm just gonna keep checking this. Okay, perfect. Um, so th these are really nice little hot plates you can eat, get for, they're good, I like them because you can kind of control them away from the oven. If you have an electric, stove it can be a little bit challenging sometimes for temperature because that's what this one is gas is really easy because you can turn it down but this one is great for traveling or anything like that okay trauma so trauma is a minor strain or sprain right where we've had this inner injury maybe used uh, strained or sprained your ankle that's a super super common right place so first thing is always rice right you want to rest ice compression and elevation that's number one so you sprain your foot you're like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna do that first. Then you're gonna take the Arnica, the homeopathic remedy that I just taught you all about, Arnica 30C. Three small pellets under the tongue every 30 minutes. So this is definitely one you wanna have in your first aid kit, right? Is Arnica, because a, you, an acute injury is very common. So I put some other homeopathic remedies on here that I wanna talk about. So Rust Tox is the next one. So Rust Tox, you can think of, you know, a rusty door, that's when you want to kind of take that like when you get up in the morning and you're like oh that ankle is still hurting it's hard for me to walk that's when you take rust talk so you might want to write that down in your notes like when that injury is 
first thing in the morning, hard to move. Pain with that first movement in the morning, that's when you take rest tox. So you had this injury the night before, you took some Arnica, or, or the day before, you, then you wake up in the next morning, you're like, ah, oh, it doesn't feel so acute anymore, but now I'm having this like pain with movement. So that's rest tox, yes. My mother used to take rest tox before she would go into the woods poison ivy. Yes, yes, so rust toxins from the poison ivy plant. Um, so you can you can take it as a preventative for when you're around poison ivy. So yeah, that is one thing. So, so a lot of the plants come, or homeopathic remedies come from all different types of things, plants, minerals. So yeah, it is a use for that as a poison, poison ivy preventative. Yeah, it totally does. So for the rust tox, uh, 30C, Three small pellets under the tongue every four hours up to six doses if the injury is hot, swollen, and stiff. Okay, so that's that stiff, you know, when you have an injury and you're like, you can't really open the joint, that's that movement I'm talking about, a rusty door. Okay, then um, Ruta, Ruta graviolens, so that's another one, 30C. This one is when you have an injury to the cartilage the ligament and the tendon around the bone. Now, let's say you had a knee injury to the ACL. This is a great time to use rest, uh, Ruta graviolens. So anytime you have an injury directly to the ligament or tendon, you wanna use Ruta. Great one for your first aid kit. A lot of times when I, if I personally have an injury, I'll use a combination. I'll use the Arnica, the Ruta, and the Restox. I'll take them all three. If I don't know exactly like what's happened yet, right? I'm like, okay, I had an injury and it hurts really bad, but I don't know. So I'll take like, I'll take a little bit of each one just to help my body start. So you could do that as well, but I have included here when exactly if you're not sure because you're learning. Um, but yeah, mainly for cartilage, ligaments, and tendons, a tendon injury. Okay, and then Brionia, so Brionia alba, this is our 30C, you also have three small pellets under the tongue every four hours, so you can see kind of it's that same acute dosing. And this is when the injury is hot, red, or swollen, and the pain is tearing and stitching. Okay, so you know you have that kind of like tearing pain, like you feel like your body's been torn apart. We also use Brionia for um, a, um, cold or flu when you have that stitching and tearing cough or you feel like your body is being torn apart because you feel so ill that's another reason we use brionia so the pain is also better with cold so if you have an injury you know how sometimes you're like ah, i don't really want to put any ice on it it feels better with heat so this is when you feel we have a swollen joint and it feels way better when you apply cold this is when you know that Brionia is the remedy for you. Do you see how you can start using the homeopathic remedies? So as you're starting to use them, I just put a few on here for you. So they would be easy to start learning about. Yes? You say you can combine them all, take them all in one. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, so if you're gonna combine them, I usually will take them one after the other just so my body can recognize them. So say for instance, you're taking um, Arnica, you've had, a, this is when you, when you have like a sprain or a strain, like so say you sprained your ankle. So you think like, okay, I sprained the tendon, I've had an acute trauma, it's bruising already, and then, may, and then maybe also it's really hard to move the, the, in the foot. So you would take a little bit of Rustox and you would take it, and then you would take a little bit of the Arnica and then take it, and then a little bit of the Ruta and take it one after the other. And you could take, so you can totally do that combination um, because they each have a different way they're working. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, okay, great. So that's kind of like the trauma aspect, that trauma piece. And then you could also remember that you could go back to these pain tinctures, right? So in your medicine cabinet, Pedicularis, Valerian, and Cava. Pain, you could remember P for pain. Acute pain, take the Pedicularis. Valerian, you like your Z's, your V for sleep. <laughs> okay, this is your sleep remedy. And Kava, this is your nervous system when you're stressed out. Okay, so remember, if you had an acute trauma, you can go straight to these as well. You can also use chamomile for our essential oils. A lot of the stuff is not in your first, you haven't, some of it is in here in your guide. I'm giving you extra information, so I would suggest writing some of this stuff down. If I talk too fast, please, you know, just say, raise your hand and say, what did you say? I can repeat it. Sometimes I talk fast, so please let me know. Um, so first aid, chamomile is your great one for trauma. When it comes to the essential oils, 
it's super, super good for inflammation. So using this in, with a cold compress, um, you could use the dried herb, or you could use the fresh herb or the essential oil. So you can make a, a straight compress, um, and you could do, take your bowl of, um, say this was ice water, because you've had an acute injury to your foot, and you're gonna add uh, ice, water and a couple drops. I would put like three to five drops of chamomile into the bowl and then submerge the injury into the bowl because that's going to reduce the inflammation right away. You could also, if it's a place you can't submerge, <laughs> which it could be common, right? You could make a gauze, right? Or a uh, washcloth compress. Do the same thing. Dip it, soak it in the bowl and then take it out and then apply it to the injury. Does that make sense? Okay, great. Let's check. Oh yeah, doing good. Okay, burn. All right, let's talk about burns and sunburns, right? This is a really great one where we live, where we have the sun, it's easy to get burned, very common. And also in your kitchen where you're doing a lot of cooking, really good to know about for your first aid kit. So burns can be caused by many things, right? Sun, fire, chemicals. <laughs> one time I was in Seattle and uh, when we lived there, and I dropped my phone in the fire pit at the beach. We had like a big bonfire and I was like, oh, I should totally grab it. <laughs> and I did, I grabbed it. But I was like, I don't know why. It was like on the edge and I was fine. But later I thought, oh, that was really stupid. But I did have like all the hair was like burned off of my <laughs> like arm. Um, We're learning so much about you, Dr. I'm really all these little things about my injuries. This is what this is about. Uh, made by uh, Boyron, which is like the homeopathic company. And then here, it's great because it, you can look up things really easily by condition, and it will tell you exactly what to use. So this is a, this one I keep in my, you saw me pull it out. I keep it in the first aid kit here at the farm because if I'm not here or if I need to send someone up, I'm like, okay, look it up in the book. It's right there. It will tell you how to use it. So this is another easy one to use, and it's got not just emergency, but other things. So those are a couple of resources. Is that listed in the resources in the I don't back? Think this, I don't think this one is in the okay. back. So if you want to, this one yeah, is one. Uh, just by B-O-I-R-O-N. But everything else is listed in your resources. Everything else to be in the back. Yeah. yeah. So this one is the, uh, by B-O-I-R-O-N. That's the uh, company that makes the homeopathics. And it's just called the Easy Guide. Easy guide to homeopathy. So it's a great one to just start learning about homeopathy. Okay. Can we pass that around? Take yes. Picture, yes, yes, yes. Thank where, you. Where is the resource list at? I think I put it in the back. Let's see. Okay. And then what are your handouts? Oh, it's in the handout. Yeah. yeah. In the handout. Yeah. Useful resources. It's Can the. the <coughs> excuse me. It's the page yeah. right before the glossary. In the back, okay. at the bottom, it says useful resources. <laughs> oh, geez, right there. Thank you. Yes. So let's take a look at that. So I put in here the homeopathic oh, emergency guide, the naturopathic first aid kit, herbal medicine from the heart of the earth, herbal treatment of children. So that's a great one to have if you have kids, and herbal recipes for vibrant health. So those are just a couple. There's so many, and I have lots of books here too if you want to look. But that's a good resource guide for you. Okay. Any questions? Let's see, where are we? We're talking about burns. Okay, so let's talk more about burns. So we already talked about making the salve for burns, and we're making it up here. So this is a great one to use. And let's talk about treatment. So you may find one of the things, I put a lot of different things. One of the things I like about or I wanted to provide for you was different uses, right? So that if you don't have something on hand or in your toolkit, you can use something else. And we're on page, I think, 12. Yes. Yeah. My numbers are different, and I'm sorry. It's because I printed it out before I sent it to Staples. Um, but yeah, you're at 12. <clears throat> we're under superficial burns and sunburns. Okay. So, um, one, immediately place the affected part under cold water, right? That's step number one. You, prob you probably know these kind of things, right? Apply a cold compress. So again, I just mentioned how to make the cold compress. And you can use a fourth a cup of honey. Honey is really great getting a, 
a unfiltered organic honey is best. Honey has been proven to have tons and tons of benefits. It's antibacterial, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory. So making, uh, using honey with aloe vera gel. So this is aloe vera. Aloe. You probably know this plant. Great one to have in your garden or on your um, porch because you could just break it off and use the gel. But you can also buy it in this form. I'm gonna pass it around. This one's from Mountain Rose Herbs. I like to buy it in this because I don't always have access to the plant. Um, and so this is a great way to use a gel. This is not the same as the liquid. So you, we have two parts of the plant. We have that jelly stuff in the inside and then we also have the latex liquid that's used internally for like drinking and hydration this is the gel that we use topically okay um, so you can buy that and use it and it's great to add into different formulas so you would take the honey or the aloe vera gel and when well, that's back up here I'll show you how to make it so you would, and then you're gonna take two to three drops of peppermint So you take peppermint essential oil, and peppermint essential oil is, remember, it's that uh, cooling heat, mm -hmm. right? So what it's going to do, you know when you drink peppermint tea, how it makes you cool, or you put it topically, it makes your skin cool. So when you have a burn, your skin feels hot, right? So we want to cool it off, and then we want to use essential oils to help the skin feel cool. So you're going to add uh, one to three, or two to three drops of peppermint essential oil. And then the aloe vera gel. Yeah, almost there. <laughs> you notice it's all good. Um, and we're gonna use a fourth a cup. Here. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so we take a fourth a cup of that. And this is something I don't usually keep in my um, first aid kit already made because you can, you know, keep this part of it, right? but you don't need to keep it the combination because you can make this really easily and then you can use it for other things. Mm -hmm. So then you just stir it up and apply it. And you can pass it around and use your tongue depressor and apply some onto your skin it and feel and smell. Great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I can yes. smoke through my mask. Is there a plant made by Particularis? Or is there a Particularis? Particu it's Particularis canadensis. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and or louse wart. She louse was at, she was at, she yes, she was asking. So the, the Particularis is a common a Pacific yeah. Northwest plant. Um, and it's Particularis is its Latin name, but we also that's also its common name, but it's like super common name is louse wart. You also might hear it called as wood betony. But we have two different plants that are wood betony, so that can be confusing. So I never actually call it that, but you might hear it called that. But we have, in the garden, we have wood betony, which is stackies. You're gonna learn about that in for the pain and inflammation one. But yeah, so this is, we don't have this growing here. I would have shown you it. And I tried to find a picture of it in my herb books, and it's, it's not as commonly uh, studied um, in herbal medicine. So I'm still looking, I have a, actually have a black and white one, I think I, um, did I find the black and white one? Yeah, then pass this one around. What's I found, this, again? Uh, this is a Particularis. This is the one for pain, remember? Mm -hmm. um, and for you in your medicine cabinet. And I couldn't find a color picture, I'm still looking for one, but there's a back black one, black and white. Okay, all right, so, what, so for this, this is gonna be your cooling, but you could also use lavender. Remember we talked about a lavender oil previously. <laughs> in some other classes, but I'm gonna talk about it right now. It's one of the main claim to fame essential oils for birds. So you can make the same thing that we just made and you could add the essential oil of lavender. When would I choose, or when would you choose one or the other? What would be an idea maybe? Any ideas? Any maybe? So it's kind of up to your preference. I usually use the peppermint if it's kind of, if it feels more, um, if I really want it to cool off quickly and I don't have as much access sometimes to that ice cold bath. Um, but usually lavender is my first go-to and peppermint is my second. Um, did you try it, on any, try it on your skin? Yeah, I think a few people did, yeah. And how, did you notice that it was kind of cooling, right? So it's, you know, when you have it, I really like it for sunburn. 
um, because it, it, sunburn I feel is like when you have this like all over heat, which I get burned a lot because I have fair skin. Um, and so that's when I really like it because then I can feel my body to try to cool off the like massive <laughs> overall burn it's had. Okay. We might you learned that. Right, we need it today. Yeah. Right, okay. Here we go. So um, remove aloe vera gel from the inside of the plant. So if you're gonna make it on your own, and you, does everyone know what aloe vera looks like, the plant itself? Okay, so when you, 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 know, you open it up and you squeeze out the stuff into a bowl, that's that stuff. That, so you can either buy it in this form, or you can use your own plant, which I suggest, right? That's great. And then you can um, mix in the lavender, like I just mentioned. So there, I gave you both recipes there, so you can do either one. Also, so you could use witch hazel. Witch hazel is great because it's a, it has so many different things. We're gonna be using it today to make a bug spray. Um, but I always have it in my medicine cabinet because it has many, many, many different uses. You can make a toner, you can make it for cooling. It's awesome. So you could use here, it's the, it's the plant Chamomilius virginiana. If you want to buy it, and it's right here on page 12, you can see it's bolded. If you want to buy it and make your own, you could buy the root and then make your own uh, plant matter there, your own tincture. And you could do a cold compress, so you would take, can I have one of those bowls, an empty one, please? You need a certain size? It doesn't matter. So you would take the little bit of the witch hazel, and then you would take your um, little compress. We're just gonna use this here. And then you would dump it in there, right? And so again, we're just making a cool compress and then you would apply it straight to the burn. If there's an open wound, again, to the burn, um, you have to be cautious about what you're applying, especially, you know, you know alcohol. You, and again, if it's really bad, you need to seek out some help. Okay, you could also do you can make a poultice with bentonite clay. So I love bentonite clay. Does everybody ever know what bentonite clay is? No. no. All right, so I'm, I'll pass this around. Can I have another, another bowl? Another bowl. <laughs> Making lots of things today. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bentonite clay, um, you can use it internally and topically as we use it for making masks. So you can make, it's like we're gonna make like a burn mask, an anti-burn mask, okay? So you would take um, wet bentonite clay and you would make a little poultice. So what I like to do, so you could use straight up water or you could use also the witch hazel toner. That's another great one. So um, I'll pass around. It's really fine. Yeah, super mm -hmm. fine. So um, it's a very, very soft powder. You can use it like if you like to make your own mask. It's a great facial mask, but it's really good for burns. If you, especially to, like say you have a, one on your hand, it's easy to make a little mask with that. So then you just add, you can either add, we'll just do the witch hazel since I already have it here. You could either add water or witch hazel. Oh, you're going to cut the custard. <laughs> I guess Thank I should you. give you a few. I know, right? So then you're just going to mix it until it makes a paste. Thank you. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. I'll just use this one here. It's just water. Um, you want, when I'm making a clay for topical application, you want it to be cut thin. So usually the way that I actually do it, which I didn't do it this way, is I apply the, um, put the water in the bowl first and then add the clay. That way I don't have to keep adding more and more clay. So is that blocking off the oxygen to the wound to keep it from burning? Yeah, well, no, actually what it does is it pulls out the burn, that's the same, like the heat. That's the same thing that a poultice and a compress does. So it's a clay um, is great for doing that. You can use clay and seaweed. Both of those things will pull out the heat. So it's a cool... Um, you said clay and what? Seaweed. seaweed. Seaweed, yeah, so you can use... Um, seaweed is great. If you have a larger area that's a, a more like that one to two degree where it's pretty bad, you can buy seaweed and you can um, soak the seaweed and apply it and leave it on there. Or you can put seaweed into a bowl of water and let the, you know, cause seaweed's kind of mucilaginous, right? And so you can leave it in there and then uh, use that water. Uh, but what kind of a bowl has people uh, uh, Between a one to two, blistering but not open, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So we, I can, I'll pass around this. I'm not going to continue to mix it up, but you want it to be, it's because I, I added the ice cold water. It's not really like, ooh, Susan. Ooh. <laughs> it looks a little mucky. <laughs> yeah. So you want it to be like more like a little bit of a thinner, like mud paste. Um, but uh, we'll pass it. Yeah. I, I didn't quite get there, but, um, because I added, don't, uh, and you can pass that around, don't add ice cold water, which is what I did. <laughs> uh, you want to add like a room temperature water. The bentonite clay lasts forever and you keep it. Yeah, bentonite clay, you know, I've had that bag for a long time. I use it a lot for making creams and clays and masks for patients. And um, you can just buy a bag of it, put it in your medicine cabinet, it's not going to go bad. Yeah, super good. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then I put on here the dosage. So if you have a burn, use Pedicularis canadensis orally for pain, P for pain. And uh, two to three dropperfuls every two to three hours. So that's a high dosage, right? And when you have, this is like a really bad burn where it's causing you a lot of pain, right? Um, you can also apply the St. John's Wort salve. So this salve that we made, remember I talked about St. John's Wort for nerves. And this salve is great for nerve pain. It burns up a lot because they damage the nerves, right? So you get a lot of nerve pain, um, radiating nerve pain, and then localized nerve pain. So you could use this salve. And then also you can use the Remedy um, Cantharis. So this is one particularly for burns. Cantharis 30C, three pellets under the tongue every 10 minutes. And what I recommend so when you get your, if you're gonna buy some homeopathic remedies, and they're really inexpensive, you know, I think they're like, you know, $10, 10 to $15 at the store. Um, if you need a resource, you can ask me and I can help. Uh, you can see the ones that were <laughs> all the way in the bottom. The ones that I had in, your, in the container, these ones here, they come in brown, which I like. They're brown glass. I ordered these from a company in California, Hahnemann's, um, and they come in small amounts. So if you need resources or if you want to purchase something particularly you can't find, um, the FDA is trying to regulate homeopathic medicine right now, which is, I find, like, completely ridiculous because it doesn't have anything in it, and they just want to regulate something. So anyway, I don't need to go into all that. But um, they're trying to regulate it, so if you need help finding a remedy that you can't find, please reach out to me and I can order it for you, or you can you know, get together with some people, exchange some numbers in the class and order. But Kentharis 30C is another one, and then Belladonna, this one is really good for those burns that are really red, especially a sunburn. Belladonna, we use it also, you know when you have a fever and you're like kind of delirious and you turn red, <laughs> like when you have a flu, that's when we also use Belladonna. So belladonna is a plant, um, and it's a poisonous plant. You probably, if you saw it, you would probably recognize it. So it causes that kind of like delirium and hypnotic state if it's, a, it's poisonous. So we use it as a homeopathic remedy because we use it as like as mind you, it's not even really in there anymore in that form. Every 30 minutes until the redness subsides, subsides and the symptoms resolve. Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay, let's talk about insect bites. You guys are probably familiar with these, right? <laughs> Every, day. <laughs> Every day, right? So we have mosquitoes, we have tick bites, we have, you know, all kinds of, I think when I moved to this area, I was very surprised how many like bugs there are. Like we don't have, like in the in Seattle, there are definitely not this many bugs. Like, <laughs> so there's a lot here. Um, one thing I wanna mention, diverse. yeah, bite, very diverse. If you have a, a known allergy to bees, make sure you're responsible and carrying an EpiPen um, either with you, having your prescription refilled, check your EpiPen, um, and knowing, hiking with it, going outdoors, or knowing that, that your friends and family know how to use it. Because you know, if you're really have, you're in a situation where you got stung by a lot of bees and your throat closed up, you could die, right? And so that's an important part on you. And then um, a lot of times you have to get that prescription from a doctor, so make sure it's refilled. Okay, so to prevent bug bites, we can use dun -dun -dun -dun, citronella. Super easy to grow in your garden. So let's pass some of this around. I'm gonna keep one of these, and then I can move that side. Thank you. I love citronella. I love to grow it in my garden. It's super easy to grow. You smell it, it just smells absolutely divine, I think. I love the way it smells. 
And when you're out in your garden, all you have to do, or on your porch at night, is you take a piece and you just rub it on your skin. <laughs> or, yeah, or you take it and rub it in your hands and you just rub it on your skin, rub it on your clothes and the bugs, it's like, it's perfect. Yes? I lived in the Caribbean. Yeah. I cut a, uh, a mean tree for somebody. It's not bad. Not just like a shower. shower. And I want to uh, resort because I did trivia there. And that was at one time, the ski is going to roll around. <laughs> Even after a shower. Mm -hmm. It kept away from me from that Yeah, Neem, uh, N-E-E-M, he was just mentioning. That's a really good... Um, one for ticks, anti-ticks, and anti-bugs. It's antifungal, antimicrobial. Yeah, that's a great one. Thank you, John. You need to kill my wife. <laughs> <laughs> right, so need that extra bonus of keeping your partner away. Okay, so what do you notice about this plant? It smells lemony. It smells delicious, lemony, right? So when we, the citrus family of essential oils, I didn't put a lot on here, but I did put citronella and eucalyptus and also lemon eucalyptus specifically i didn't write it on here lemon eucalyptus lemon eucalyptus so the studies that have been done on the lemon eucalyptus show that it works better than deet Wow, better than DEET. So it, if you are, and I don't recommend using DEET, but if you need to have something that is super strong, we're going to make a, a bug repellent today. This is the one to go to, lemon eucalyptus. So I always use it if I'm going, you know, to hiking where there's a place there's a lot of bugs or a, in a malaria environment. Um, this is a great one to use. Okay, so you can use citronella. We're going to use the essential oil today, but you could also make the solar infused oil, or you could also make your stove top, so you could have this plant. You could make your own oil and use that. You know when you use bug spray and it has that little bit of, it's like kind of oily? Mm -hmm. So you could make your own oil and you add some more essential oils and make your own bug spray that way. We're gonna do a different type today, but I'm just telling you that you can make your own oil and use it that way. Um, it's great, I love it, it grows really well here, super easy to grow. Okay, so. Let's talk about um, insect bites. So when you have a bee sting, you wanna remove the, again, remove with the Epsom salt, soak the area with, to make the skin easy to remove the stinger, right? Remove that. And then you can apply a compress, again, of witch hazel. I talked to you, remember, about how to do, how to do that. Um, and you can also do two to three drops of lavender oil on a moist cotton ball. Um, so you would put the, Lavender, could you get me a cotton ball? They're right on, on my, to the, <laughs> see if you can find them. Okay. It's your test. Um, so you would take, you can use the, so some essential oils we use NEAT, N-E-A-T, um, N-E-E-T, NEAT. Um, and that means they're not, thank you, diluted. Yeah, I'll take the, I'll just take the jar. We, um, so you would take the cotton ball, and you can apply the essential oil straight there it goes, to the cotton ball and then apply straight to the area. So that's, you know, the, a lavender oil is great for that for burns. So that's good. Um, and we can pass around the cotton ball, but I'm going to do one that I didn't just touch on my skin. So you all can smell the beauty of lavender. And we're gonna be using it today. So apply two to three drops to the cotton ball directly. So again, these are some great essential oils to have in your first aid kit. Now it's a So homeopathic apis, apis melifica, 30C. So this comes actually from the bee, this homeopathic remedy. Um, and I love it for bee stings. It's wonderful. You can also emotionally, it's for the like the busy, busy bee personality. You can think of that person's like go, 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 that bee. So that's the, in that emotion. You know, when you have a bee sting, you're not always paying attention. You're going really fast. You're like doing something. You're like, oh, I just like put my hand on a bee or I stepped on a bee. <laughs> so this is like kind of to help you remember. So Apis is great. 30C um, and every two to three hours. To relieve swelling. So this is when you have that sting and it swells up really big. 
if the pain is stinging and burning with a large amount of swelling. Okay, and then we have Leadum. So Leadum is also great to use for shots and vaccines and things like that when you have that uh, swelling from a actual uh, needle going into the skin or a insect with a long stinger. Anything with a stinger, Leadum is great for that. So every two to three hours to relieve swelling, up to 10 doses if it's swollen and inflamed. So those are kind of two. So the I usually always start with Apis as my go-to. Leadum is like the second one if it's more like from a, a zingy, a zingy stinger. And also if the stinger is still in the, you know, when you can see the stinger, that's usually when I'll use Leadum or use a combination. So swollen, you can use either one. Leadum, more from, again, from that like puncture stinger. Um, and, but they're kind of interchangeably in that way. Does that make sense? Okay, perfect. Alrighty. We are gonna take a break, okay? Um, so we're gonna take a break and we're gonna go from 10.45 to 11.15, I think. Yes, 11, yes. You're, yes, we're gonna talk about that next when we come back. Oh, you have to go, I'm sorry. I just to take a look at me, I just twist and pull. Twist and pull, right, yeah, you want to get the whole body out for sure. Sure Yeah, that's really important. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in the, um, I'm sorry you have to go, but you can watch the yeah, video. video. We all said you, uh, you've got the paper, so we'll make sure you get the link to the video. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can watch the back half. Okay, 30 minute break. Take a break, get some snacks, get something to drink. Go out to the garden, don't get too hot. If you're too hot now, we have some things to help you cool off, okay? I'll clean up. Okay, I'm gonna make can I compost that? No, you have to, yeah. Sorry. Yes. Can I ask you one question? Yes. I cannot take anti-inflammatory. Oh, yeah. So these things here that are labeled for anti-inflammatory, how are they do with the kids? Yeah. So I meant the homeopathics? And that's the other kind of homeopathic or any of the other. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There is a, a email me, and I'll send you there. We do have, there's some herbs that we have to have caution with when it comes to uh, the yes. kidneys. Okay. Um, so email me, and I'll send you a link for that, because I have Perfect. patients that. So our next thing we're going to do now is we're going to strain the salve that we already made. All right, so step number one, turn off the heat <laughs> so I don't burn myself and have to use something else that we've already made, right? So you can use, I'm going to grab, sorry, I'm going to grab one tool. Uh, what else do you need? I just need a big metal strainer. Do you know where those are? And we'll see if she can find those ones. Okay. So you need your cheesecloth. Cheesecloth is a great addition to your herbal, herbal medicine making cabinet. Really cheap. And you can wash them uh, after you use them if they, as long as they still are okay. I usually say, you know, thank you, perfect. Just don't wash it with like, you know, bleach <laughs> or fragrant soap, you know, even just hand washing it because you don't want that to go back into your medicine. Okay, so you take the cheesecloth your piece and you can these uh if you haven't used these before for straining different things they come in like a big a big sheet like this so you can open it up and then make whatever shape that you want for straining okay so i have a bowl and then i have a large metal strainer all right <clears throat> And we're going to do this in a couple stages, so I'm going to strain it and then I'm going to let it cool a little bit and then I'm going to squeeze it because of course it's probably too hot for me to touch. So take the lid off and then test to see if you can touch. You can always use, you know, hot pads and then you're going to pour it into your dish, your strainer, I mean. And then we will strain it in a little bit once it cools off to the touch. And then we're gonna pour it into the individual jars. Okay, so that's kind of like stage. I don't know if you can all see that. You wanna, because it's not hot, just because I don't spill it. Just pass it around. So oh, it is hot. <laughs> yeah, don't touch, don't touch the bottom. Yeah, don't touch the bottom. So uh, we want 
once we pour that into the jars, I will let you then, if you would like to put any essential oils into the salve, you can. We've learned about some today, and I'll, we can pass those around. We're gonna be using them in the next phase of class today. Or you, like I said, you can also keep it plain, you know, and then add your oils later, but you have that option. Um, one thing, actually, I think I will strain it a little bit. So we need to add the beeswax. So let's turn to, um, I'll take that back to you when you're done. Let's turn back to the recipe. Thank you. Which, I'll take that back. Yeah. yeah. It fell. Is everybody okay? You didn't get burned, did you? No. What's okay. going on? I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking. Sorry, sorry. Okay, it's the first aid formulas, and I think it's 17. 15. 15. I'm sorry. 15. That was only too often. 15. Okay, so what do we do here? We um, made our oil, we did the double boiler method, we just strained it off, and I'm, I think I forgot to put in your recipe to add the beeswax. Mm -hmm. And I did. So this is something you want to add to your where? recipe. Yeah, I'm wondering how Right, okay, so at the top where it says ingredients, <clears throat> you could add there. So what I like to do is, um, oh. yeah, see where it says that there's no beeswax? <laughs> Nope, none of your beeswax. Okay, so um, these are the beeswax pastilles, pastilles that I, I like to use and recommend, um, and I'll pass them around so you can see them. They are little pieces of beeswax. So you can also get the beeswax in a, in a large chunk and grate it, which is really, really hard to do. So I don't recommend that, but you can. Yeah, you lose your fingertips. Then you have to use your first aid kit. So, okay. um, so since we used, I'm gonna use, let's start out with a ha uh, half a cup of beeswax. Um, I'm just trying to think for your recipe because I did one part to one part. Let's do a half a part of beeswax. And we'll adjust it. Okay, so what you want to do is, what am I doing? I'm just going to strain this as best as I can here now. Can I help in any way? It's okay. Okay. Do you want a pair of gloves? But she's got a best mm -hmm. fingertips, so. Bezo. <laughs> All right. I'm going to just stress it and out. And anybody who needs some cool off, if you're getting warm, I've got mm -hmm. some cool off spray up here. So just let me know. Okay. All right. There we go. I'm just going to do it like that. Dr. Okay. Is the, when we did the tinctures, we just strain them straight into the metal one. Yes. Now we're going through cheesecloth. Yes. That, is that with oils? We'll always go through cheesecloth. Yeah, because you you when you have the oil in an herb, what it does is the herb soaks up the oil. Like I'm not gonna, I'll squeeze it a little bit, but it's like that you want to get every last little drop. Okay. And with the alcohol, it doesn't do that. The I think it's because it's a different kind of like plant matter. The fat, you know, the plants soak up the fat in a different way. So um, yeah, that's a great question. So you can still use cheesecloth when you're straining tinctures. Mm -hmm. um, if you found that the matter was going through your metal strainer, because the metal strainers even have different sizes of holes. Mm -hmm. And so you could always strain it again through a strainer. So we're gonna add um, a, a half a part. Um, and I used the larger cup before. Okay, I used the one cup when I was measuring. So I'm gonna add a half a cup of beeswax. Um, and then how do we test to know if we've added enough beeswax? Because you can adjust your beeswax. Um, it's called the frozen <laughs> spoon test. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a frozen, uh, well we do have a freezer, we could do it. But um, I'm gonna pass this around so you can see the beeswax and that comes from Mountain Rose Herbs. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna stir the beeswax till it melts, which doesn't take long again because you have the pastilles and I'll, um, Bring it around so you can kind of see what it's looking like. Mm -hmm. So I added added the um, beeswax. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna melt. We're gonna let it melt. So you gotta do this step when it's hot, right? <laughs> so I almost missed a big major step. You, I couldn't keep it back up again. Um, but yeah, so it's melting in there. It's gonna take a little while. You can even put it back onto the uh, double boiler if you needed to heat it back up again. Um, but it, yeah, so I might do that just so we can see things up. Yep, so these hats. While you're back here, Dr. Lulu, yeah. like, can you say anything about toothache mm -hmm. or carry down the pain? Sure, yeah, two things. Yeah, 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 two things. So, um, the question from Ty, is that right? Yes, yeah. From Ty in the back was about toothache. 
Um, I'm just gonna put this back on real quick here so that it can heat the beeswax up just a little bit more. So you can do this if you're a little impatient <laughs> and you want it, but it will melt over time. Let's see, if it's in the winter, If it's in the winter, then you might want to heat it up because it, it will, the oil will get cool too fast and you want your beeswax to melt. So we're just going to melt the beeswax and um, I'm going to get to the toothache question. I just want to finish this a little bit. Um, the frozen spoon test. Okay, so you take a metal spoon, you're going to dip it into your salve and you're going to stick that into the freezer just for like a minute or two till it solidifies and then take it out. That's what your final result is gonna look like. <laughs> so if you if he's like, oh, okay, this is not thick enough, then you can go back and add more beeswax. And you can always heat it back up and add more too. Like it's not gonna do anything to it. I wouldn't do it if you have added essential oils. That's where you don't wanna heat it back up. But in this stage, it's fine on that low double boiler. So again, uh, frozen spoon test, stick it in there. Once the beeswax and the oil have combined together, Stick that spoon into the freezer till the liquid solidifies, then take it out and see how you like your salve, right? And so, you know, during the summer, as the, it's gonna, be your, it's gonna be warmer, it might be a little softer, and in the winter it'll be harder, but that is kind of like what your salve is gonna be like. So some people like a really hard salve, some people like something that's like softer, you know? You want it to be, but you don't want it to be liquid in your container, that's like the key. So, um, we will let this continue its little melting process. Okay, great. I'm gonna put the lid back on. Okay, so toothache. So uh, the, as far as herbs go, these pain herbs here, especially the pedicularis, is gonna be great for tooth pain. And also the essential oil of clove, and you can do that topically in like a little bit of water. Um, and then if you're having a problem sleeping, what's the toothache? Bringing in the valerian. So those two, the particularis and the valerian, those are great. And also, are you gonna be here for the pain and inflammation one? Maybe. Okay, well, if you're not, just make sure, and we can send you the handout, but I'll be talking about more of the pain, particular things, and inflammation. Um, of course, the toothache of it probably needs to be resolved in some way if it's from like a cavity or a root canal, but these are definitely temporary things that you can help. But you wanna decrease the inflammation at the site. So using topical compresses that we've learned about today, decreasing inflammation, so anything cool, right? Like an ice compress. Um, sometimes heat can be better, so it kind of depends, like I mentioned, that cold and hot piece. Um, I, when I, before I had my wisdom teeth out, my teeth were really tender, my, I was having jaw pain, so I used heat because that would help me have like a longer sustained relief. So you could do a hot compress the same exact way that I've talked about today, but using a hot water instead of ice water, not like boiling, but nice hot, and then add your essential oils, and you could use chamomile. Chamomile is going to be the best one there. Um, using your chamomile essential oil topically on the face. Um, and you could also use some lavender. You could do lavender in the uh, topically and you could also do lavender internally too, like with a little, um, in a capsule or in some water. So those are some good ones there, okay? Okay, wonderful. Let's see where we are. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we talked about that. Ticks. <laughs> Let's talk about some more bugs. Okay, so around here we do have ticks, um, and not as big as a problem with Lyme disease, but we do have it. So I just want to make sure I talked about it today. And we're on page um, 13. Thank you, 13. So when spending the time outdoors, the best thing to do is to really have a repellent. And we're gonna making, be making a bug repellent today. So you could spray that on your clothes before you're going out hiking during tick, tick season. And the real ones we wanna be concerned about here are the little tiny babies, the nymphs. Um, and so spraying it on your clothing before you're going out hiking or walking your dog or checking afterwards is really key. And uh, checking at home once you arrive home within that 24 hour period, having a partner check you know, places that you can't see on your back 
all of the warm areas is where the ticks will like to go, like armpits and groin, etc. So I recommend using the tick twister and I put it there. You can find it on Amazon. Um, it's a little like, it's just a tool kind of kit and it's a green device and it just helps to twist the tick so you get the whole entire thing because you don't want to have any part of the tick still in the skin. So that's a great one. It's really inexpensive and you can just add it to your toolkit. And um, then disinfect the area, right? And so use your tincture that you created today with the, dilute it with a little bit of water and use that to wash out the area because you don't want any bacteria that the tick was carrying. Okay, so that's really easy. And then you want to use the leadum. Remember I talked about leadum for the bites for, or the bee stings. So leadum is like the tick is putting his little like, you know, yucky stuff into you, right? His little pincher, what are we the little, his mouth. He bites you with his mouth. Anyway, um, so you want to use the leadum in that circumstance. And then echinacea tincture orally. So this is your herb, your immune herb in your kit. Remember, if you came to the immunity class, echinacea was our big one. So this is a wonderful one to keep in your kit. You can also use it topically um, as a cleaner too, because remember it's antimicrobial and antibacterial, but I like to just keep it in the kit for immune support, but you could also do it as a topical. So echinacea, 30 drops every hour. And then the key, if you find the tick, keep the tick, put it in a bag and bring it with you to the doctor because they can test the tick to see if the tick then ha is infected, okay, with Lyme disease. So no, that's like not really talked about very much, and that's really key. Here we don't really have Lyme as much, but we do. So that's, if you get, just keep the tick, and if you have um, any signs of the bullseye rash, right, so where it's the actual, looks like a bullseye, it's red over where the bite is, that 24 hour period, you can, you know, put the, just keep the tick, take it with you to the doctor and say, hey, test the tick, that way you don't have to go through the whole process. If you have a bullseye rash, it's most likely you've been affected with Lyme, but uh, there's other forms of tick disease, Rocky Mountain spotted fever, etc. So just, that's a little tip there. So not all ticks there. carry Lyme disease? No, no, no they don't. Don't. no, they don't. No, they don't. Okay, yeah, not as, especially the ones here, we don't have the Lyme disease ticks here as, as much. Okay, let's talk about poison ivy, oak or sumac, another popular one we have here or not popular. <laughs> um, okay, so prevention, keeping away from plants is really key as much. So uh, if you have a strong allergy, identifying them, whether when you're hiking, everybody knows what they look like, right? The leaves are three, let them be. Mm -hmm. So if you're new to the area, make sure you're able to recognize the plant so you can stay away from it as much as possible. And if you're exposed within 10 minutes, you wanna wash off. So that's, a, I think, a, a piece that's missing from that too is, if you're out and you're like walking through the area and you think you're exposed, immediately wash off the area. Just regular soap? Yeah, you can use regular soap. Um, you could also use some of our, you know, our cleaners here, um, which would help, but yeah. And then I always recommend if you're coming home and you've been exposed or in your yard, to just take off your clothes outside the house, put them in a bag and go straight into the shower. Cause then, you know, your clothes still have the oil from the plant on them. And then you're, if you're just washing your arms, it could be on your pants and then you just get exposed again. Um, then you want to apply a uh, cold compress to the area. Um, oh, it melted. Great. Did you know it melted? Is that what? <laughs> no, I think Carol made a I didn't. <laughs> so I, thought I, heard some, I thought I heard somebody say something. I said, oh, okay. Okay, it's great. on your energy. How's that? Yeah, okay, so I'm going to let that cool off. So it's completely melted it now. Yay! Yay. So then what we will do, and I'm not going to do the frozen spoon test, but um, we're going to pour them into the jars. If you need to add more, we'll let them kind of see how they solidify during the rest of the class. If we need to add more, we'll just send you, put a little bit of beeswax on top, and you can melt it back up when you get home. And then if you, again, if you want to add essential oils, let us know, and we can do that too. Okay. So if you have gotten, you've been affected, you've come in contact with poison ivy or poison oak, and now you notice the blistering rash starting, right? So apply a cold compress to the affected area, just like I mentioned, using some of our essential oils, right? So we can use lavender is gonna be great for rash. Peppermint can be a little bit too much for poison ivy. I usually wouldn't recommend it, but lavender is really good. Chamomile and helichrysum. 
This is one I haven't mentioned a lot. This is Immortel. This is a great essential oil. It's really expensive. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people don't have it in their like basic toolkit, but I really like Helichrysum. H-E-L-I-C-H-R-Y-S-U-M, Helichrysum or Immortel. Um, so this is a really good one. I like to have in my first aid kit, but you could add it on as you're moving forward. Um, you can apply the calendula tincture several times throughout the day to relieve the itching. Okay, so you made your calendula tincture and now you can apply it because it will help the, remember, calendula is inflammation. So it's going to actually decrease the inflammation at the site that's been infected. And then you can take your homeopathic remedy. So take the rest tox, like we mentioned earlier, 30C every few hours to relieve itching. And then another one is anacardium. That's another one you can add to your homeopathic kit. This is when it's really itchy and blistery and oozy, right? That's when it's like really bad. So um, that's when you're getting yellow discharge from the blister. So that's a great time to bring. Hopefully you won't ever get to that stage, but then you can bring in the anacardium. And then you want to take your echinacea tincture. You want to take that uh, to boost the body's immune system to fight off the rash. Okay, so 30 drops three times a day. So that's kind of like your little protocol for poison ivy. For unbearable <laughs> itching, you can take kava kava to help your nervous system to relax. Okay, so this is, you can then you can go to your pain ones. So I think I was mentioning, and then I got distracted earlier. What I would recommend in your toolkit is to, with a Sharpie on your homeopathic remedies and on your bottles, is to write what it's for, mm -hmm. right? Pain relief. Uh, poison ivy, whatever. So when you're going in there and you're stressed out because you have had an acute injury, you can immediately know, or make a, you know, take this uh, sheet that I gave you here of the, uh, for the first aid kit. You could print it out, you could put it on the, you know, put it in there and you could write next to the things as well. So whatever is gonna be easy for you um, or have this in a little folder next to your first aid kit, whatever is helpful. But I like to be able to know immediately on the container, like, oh yeah, this one was for poison ivy. Okay, I'm gonna take this one. You know, so that can be really helpful and easy for you and also help your family members to learn. Okay, great, let's see. Okay, and then, okay, now we're gonna talk about nausea and motion sickness. Does anybody have that with traveling? Anybody uh, prone to that? Yeah, so some people do have, like even I have a, uh, my neighbor, even anytime she's in the car, she's nauseous. It doesn't matter. So she has to actually be the driver to, to help from vomiting. Like that's like how, it's like really severe. <laughs> I feel sorry for her. Um, but there are things you can do, which is great. So let's talk about those. So. Uh, crystallized ginger, a super easy one to keep in your, like you can keep it in your glove compartment, you can keep it in your purse, you can keep it in your toolkit. If you're gonna keep it in the first aid toolkit, it'll expire, you know, so make sure you're not keeping that for too long. You might eat it before then. Um, okay, and then mint, mintha pepperita, that's peppermint tincture. And right now we're going, we're not gonna make it today, but I'm gonna give you all some because we have so much that we've made at the farm and that you can take it home and put it in your first aid kit. So that's what your empty, this empty bottle, we're gonna be passing around the peppermint the with a dropper, it's this, this one. one. Okay, and this one, so peppermint, you can think peppermint tea, right, that's for digestion. So anytime you have nausea, this is a great one to get out of your toolkit, um, whether you, maybe you had some bad food or maybe you, uh, you know, whatever you're getting the stomach flu coming on anything if you're experiencing nausea um, Not for morning sickness. It's contraindicated. So um, just for pregnancy FYI But yeah peppermint tincture. So you're gonna take 10 to 60 drops. I always start at the lower end Peppermint is very strong um, and I'd love for you guys to try it today and in your water So we're gonna pass around the peppermint. You're gonna make it your own bottle. You're gonna do um, 60 milliliters this is a 60 milliliter two ounce bottle you're gonna fill it up and then you're gonna take 10 drops and add it to your little container with some water maybe we can get some water from melissa to pass around or something okay, okay. can so, i start this on the yes you side? can start that yep and, and everybody can... use their own and let's pour it into um to make it easy for pouring because those are definitely not easy for pouring <laughs> you will make a mess So this is this is a vintage from uh, 2018. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so um, you're going to take that and then 60. 60. Well, they should have that on their little measuring cup, no? Oh, yes, you do. Yeah. I think Ruth's got a yeah. measuring cup. Yes, you do. Oh. Yeah, so me another, uh, yes, 60, 60 or oh, milliliters, and then, oh, and then our wonderful assistant in the back, Truett, our farm manager, yeah, if you don't know Truett, she is going to pass around water for you. I'd love for you to just try it and so you can really feel and taste the peppermint. Water, Truett. Hmm? Can we use this? Or do you use it? Yeah. Oh, uh, no, no, you can just use it. Use yeah, this, yeah. yeah. Cool. 60. So, six, yeah, 60. Six you're going to take 10 drops and put them into your water to drink after you fill up your container. Okay, so fill up Six your container. 6-0. I'm going to let that one. 6-0. 6-0. 6-0. All right, I'm going to put my this is, where, this is where you get your math test. <laughs> That's the peppermint. This is peppermint tincture. So peppermint tincture is in your first aid kit for nausea. This is what I want you to do with any digestive disorder. Ginger and peppermint are your go-to. Okay, so you can do 10 to 60 drops in water. So I'm having you try 10 right now so you can see the strength. So this is basically a cocktail, right? This is a cordial. So all, if you added glycerite to this and you took it to a party, <laughs> you would be like you brought peppermint shops to the party, right? That's basically what it is. <laughs> um, except this is like the pure herb form. It's not diluted and it's not white or clear. Uh, so then you're gonna pour, so here's the steps. Everybody, take your 60 milliliters and pour it into your dropper. Okay, you're gonna pour it into here. Then you're gonna take the gla your glass of water that you're gonna drink, and you're gonna put 10 drops into that glass of water and then drink it. Okay? <laughs> Is that clear? <laughs> I know that was a lot of steps. Step one, pour 60 milliliters into your container. Do we need funnels? How's everybody doing? So far, so good. Okay, this is your slow and easy. Can I, I, I have a question? Yes. Um, usually, if I feel nausea, I'll mm -hmm. take Nux Vomica. Yeah, Nux Vomica, and we're going to talk about that, yeah. It, it, uh, are those two, that peppermint and that other, is infective? I mean, I could do that instead? Or? Yes, you could do them instead, but remember, I mentioned not to do peppermint with homeopathic remedies. So, yeah, not to mix them together. Yes. Peppermint. Yeah, peppermint and coffee are contraindicated for within 30 minutes to an hour of homeopathic remedies. Okay, does everybody have their little bit of water? We just need one more minute. Okay, yeah. No, it's all good. I just want us to drink it together. <laughs> this isn't the special Kool-Aid, is it? <laughs> yeah. You're never leaving the farm ever again. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just thought I want you to experience it, and I want to have time for everybody to make and their product. Yeah. So I do have a cup of coffee that I should probably just set aside here. No, it's okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, it's okay to drink the peppermint uh, okay. tincture. So, yeah, you're going to take your cup now. You add in a little water, and now you're going to add 10 drops from your bottle to the water. And don't forget after this process to label your bottle. How much water? <laughs> um, you can do about four ounces. Yeah, you don't need a lot. Can I get you a glass? Sure, yeah. thank you. You too. So this is your test. Okay, so you are feeling nausea right now. Nauseous. And would that be enough for you? How strong is it? So you're like, this is why I wanted you to taste it here so you could get that experience. Because you can do up to 60 drops, right? So that would be, you know, it only had, thank you, 10 drops in there. So that's not um, that's not too much. So what do you think? Would you add more? Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people no, some people yes. Peppermint can be strong, right? Thank I think, you. I think you it have depends enough on to how much some water drops? Yeah. yeah. You would what? Depends on how much water. You <laughs> this is true. It does depend on how much water, right? Yeah. How diluted you made it. So yeah. So that you can kind of experiment, and you could also do ten drops, a couple. <laughs> Thank you. You want me to drink all that? <laughs> no, but I wanted you to see if you got some drops. I will just take a little splash. Um, ah, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers <laughs> to your digestive health. <laughs> your digestive health. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, I should be photographing. Yum. Yeah. Okay, so I added a lot to mine. Look how green it is. <laughs> no, so I just made, like, peppermint, basically peppermint iced tea. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is made from pure, fresh peppermint at the farm. 
it's, if you buy a peppermint tincture at the store, it's gonna taste different than this, you know, for all different reasons. The environment, the energy we put into it, the freshness of it, like there's all kinds of things. But peppermint tincture is probably one of the like top 10 easiest ones to make. Is yes. It okay to like just have this as a cooler with more water mm -hmm. throughout the yes. day. Yes. Yeah. So you can you can do that. I mean, it has alcohol, but you don't use very okay. much, right? But yes, mm -hmm. you could easily use this if you're looking for something to decrease nausea. If you're having a lot of nausea, maybe you're having some gallbladder issues, and you're having a lot of nausea, you could drink it throughout the day, right? You could just put it in a larger water bottle and or continue adding it. Um, you could also make peppermint tea by itself too, but this is concentrated, right? Like way concentrated. That's why we're using it in that form. Okay. Um, okay, Taylor, I'm gonna put this over here now. It's still warm, but it is cooling. Uh, I'm gonna put it in a, I'm gonna put it, yes. I'm not that good. I think this is the one I made for you, yeah. Please, please, please. Okay, so this is our salve oil cool. yeah with the beeswax pretty. very pretty mm -hmm. nice and yellow um and it made you can already see look at see the white even pouring cool. it just into a cool container you can see how it already started to harden so that's a good sign <laughs> right so with that made um 600 milliliters and so we're gonna put we have 12 12 12 to 60. She's gonna a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so super easy, and the salve will last for a long time, and, and it's a great thing to do. People love salves for gifts, mm -hmm. and um, if you want to again add essential oils, you could add lavender. Mm -hmm. Look, I got a friend. We have here. some lavender. Oh, you could add. Yeah. It'd be great if you want to make something that's more for sore muscles. You could do some of the pepper. If you want something that's antibacterial, antimicrobial, you could ask, also add some of the tea tree. Tea tree is kind of stimulating. You could also do rosemary um, and peppermint if you want something that and eucalyptus to open up the respiratory system. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of things you can do with this salve here. I'll let you all be creative. Once we, it, it's gonna be poured and then we'll pass it around and do the essential oil part. Okay, so let's talk about <clears throat> homeopathics for nausea and motion sickness. So Coculus 30C, the, this one is good for when the world feels like it's spinning around you, okay? Um, and then you have nausea. So have you ever had that feeling like, like when you're like on a boat or something, you're like, oh my God, everything's spinning around me? This is when you wanna take that. Next Vomica, so that's this one that Carol mentioned earlier. Next Vomica is great for motion sickness associated with queasiness headaches, chill, and aggravated by strong odors. Like if you're like, oh, it makes you sick when you smell something, this is a good one to use. And then tobacco, this is actually a remedy that I use to help people quit smoking um, because it really can produce the feelings of like wanting to throw up every time you smell cigarettes. <laughs> so this one is good for dizzy, dizziness, nausea, sweating, chills, faintness, and worse around tobacco smoke, okay? So those are the homeopathic remedies you can add to your toolkit for that. Okay, super. All right, now we're going to move to, okay, we're gonna talk about these. Okay, we're on page um, 18. 18, the itching. Sorry, my pages are off. It's one less. We're on 16. 16, itching. Is everybody yep. with me? Yep. <laughs> and I'm sorry that I'm I'm on page off. There you go. Okay. This is a common thing that can occur with all types of rashes, right? A little itching. It could just be from eczema, psoriasis, anything. You can have some itching. You could be exposed to you want, you're allergic to a food. All kinds of things. Uh, page 16. This was. Uh, oh yes. Uh, let's think. Oil? Let's label our peppermint tincture right, right now. What so is we tincture. Okay. tincture. So it's mentha pepperita. That's our tincture, peppermint tincture, and then right on there, nausea, motion sickness, digestive upset, and then label it, and it's ready to go. It's your, you know, you're already set for your first aid kit, okay? Um, the, and that will last for, yeah, like if you haven't used it within three years, maybe, I would yeah. get, yeah. So, tinctures last for a long time. There, it's just alcohol. You could think like when you're buying vodka at the store, how long did they, ago did they make it? Yeah. Like it's probably been like a while, right? <laughs> like I don't I think alcohol is the most 
uh, purest form of shelf stability, like a Twinkie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, um, so here is a little formula that I made for you, and it is using basil and using peppermint together. So this is a great uh, one that you can just apply topically. So your basil is a great herb for reducing itching. That's another one on your herbs. I don't know if you can add it on there. This is your other. Is there a particular basil? Oh, what type of basil? Yeah, yeah you, it doesn't really it particularly doesn't matter. matter. No, no yeah, matter. any type of basil you have in your garden will be fine. Um, or okay. dried. Most of the time when you buy dry buy it dried, or if you're making your own, then you would be able to know, but it's just like basic culinary basil. Right. But you could also use Tulsi. Tulsi right. would be fine too, yep. Um, and then peppermint is again that cooling effect, right? So we're using peppermint and basil for their cooling properties. So you're gonna crush one teaspoon and one uh, table, teaspoon of dried peppermint and basil together in a bowl. And if you know what a mortar and pestle is, is everybody familiar with that? It's like the the ceramic bowl and you go so you crush them together and then you want to add a small amount of water to make a paste okay. so you can do this with a fresh herb but it's much easier with a dried herb because sometimes the, the fresh basil and peppermint they don't just like crush the same way um and so you gently scrub the paste into the itchy area for two minutes so basically you're just gonna say you had you know a rash on your arm you make that little paste and then you just rub it around so it's going to decrease inflammation at the site of the rash a super easy one did you make with olive oil also maybe a little bit of olive oil instead of water oh yeah you could do it with the oil so mike was asking could you use an oil instead of water yep you could totally do that you could make an infused oil just like we did here and you could put it into your medicine cabinet or your toolkit and call it anti-itch salve super easy yeah and just apply it straight up and you could apply essential oils to spruce it up a little bit you could add your essential oil of basil and you could also add your essential oil of peppermint you kind of see how you can kind of mix some things up now that you're learning about different herbs and different oils so um tamlin is passing around the ascent the oil the sap that we made. Is anybody wanting to add essential oils to it that we've talked about today? Peppermint. Okay, I'm gonna let um, Tamlin pass around the essential oils and then you can add some. So I'd like you to add um, a total of five drops. So if you're gonna use one oil, five drops of that one oil, if you're gonna make a combination, a total of five drops, okay? Uh, for that amount of oil. Anybody? Um, so the, this is called the St. John's Wort Salve? Yes, okay. the salve that you're gonna label now that's being passed around, this was the St. John's Wort Salve on page 15, okay? So you're gonna take your container and you're gonna label it St. John's Wort Salve and I would put for cuts, burns, bruises on there so you know what to use. And then add the essential oils if you want. If you want to label what's in it, you know, you could do that. And you have exactly what we put in it on your page. Okay? Great. We've got tea tree, lavender, eucalyptus, rosemary. How does it seem to be firming up? It looks pretty good. Yeah. 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 Oh, cuts, burns, uh, scrapes, itches, rashes. Yeah, it's it's firming up really nicely. Five drops total. Yeah, five drops total. Yeah, I think it's gonna be really nice, everyone. That's a good uh, combination. Okay, I'm going to let you formulate that for a moment. Everybody said who wanted oil? How do you make it? Give me one second. Like, oh, sorry, please. Some of the essential oils do come out fast. So what I would recommend on your, on your label, 
Um, if you put essential oils in it to write it on your label, like five drops of peppermint or five drops of lavender, because you want, you want, if you like it, you want to be able to go back and make it, right? Yeah. Uh, what was your question? Uh, has a question for yes. you. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah, it has the same John Ford in it. Let's do something numbing. So, like the peppermint would be really good, and the lavender would be good. Also, you could do the basil. I don't have it, but we could grab it for you. Uh, actually, I think it's underneath you. You want? You want to wait for the basil? You want to do peppermint? Yeah. Do you mix, Doctor Lulu? Yeah, you can mix five drops total. You are the experimenter. And the mad sign. Here's the basil if anybody wants it. How long does this have to sit for weeks or anything? Okay, so the question is what happens now? So your salve is ready to go. All it has to do is harden. So you just want to let it cool off. And then um, if you want to keep it in the fridge, like because it's kind of hot right now, you could do that. But it's ready. You could start using it today. Okay. Yep, as soon as it solidifies. And if you need to change it up, you're like, well, I didn't really like that. Like it's too thick or it's too thin. And you can do that with more beeswax. Um, hopefully, I think, well, it looks like it's doing really good though. I think it's going to be good consistency. Right? Can you see that back there? Okay. How did that turn out? Everybody okay. like their, their yeah. salve and yeah. So salves are, are one of the reasons I wanted to show you how to make them today is they're so easy and so versatile. Because you can make, you know, even if you want to do something an all over skin cream, if you're having a lot of dry skin, you need something to help lubricate the skin. You know, this is a great thing to do for the summer. Okay, so we just talk, finished talking about that. Okay, the next one is on page 17, and we're talking about rashes. These are now going through just the, some of the different formulas that I've given you, and then we're gonna make some of them. So this is an easy one to do, baking soda and coconut oil. So you take uh, this, you know, a rash is something when it's red, inflamed, itchy, and like I mentioned, it can be from lots of different sources. If a rash is getting worse over time, and you see no improvement, you really wanna seek out some medical attention and see what's going on, but you go to your first aid kit first, See if what you have can help, and then if you don't see relief. That's one of the reasons it's so great to have the tools, right? You can use the tools and then reach out when you're like, okay, Dr. Lou, I tried this and it didn't work. <laughs> or, you know, something else is going on. Okay, so baking soda helps to repair the damage by, uh, that's been caused by the rash. So baking soda is number one. And coconut oil is a great moisturizer. So it's going to stop the itching and then moisture, moisturize or lubricate the area. So you take one teaspoon of baking soda. So you have your bowl and you would take your one uh, teaspoon of baking soda and then you um, add two tablespoons of coconut oil until you make a paste. During the cold season, uh, coconut oil will solidify, you know, so you could use a fractionated coconut oil, which is all the time liquid if you want to, or you could put it into a heated pot for a moment or just microwave it for a second, just like something to soften it up if it's really cold. But so two tablespoons of the coconut oil, one table, one teaspoon of baking soda, and then you mix them together, and then you apply the paste over the rash and then wash it off. So super easy, um, especially if you have kids, because a lot of times kids will get rashes like super easily from all different types of things. So this is a great one to bring in. Um, I, I get rashes a lot from being outside and working in the garden, because there's always different plants out there and the, some will aggravate me based on whatever, a different constituent the plant has, right? So it's always good to just have something on board. Um, Use this remedy daily until a rash disappears, so you can keep on using it. So this is a really easy one. You most likely have these things in your medicine cabinet or your pantry already, right? So really great. Okay, any questions about that one? Awesome. Anybody need cooling spray? It's getting a little warm. Yeah, how's Pretty everybody good? doing with the temperature? Okay. There's also a fan behind you, Viola, too. We can turn on if we need more air circulation. <laughs> okay, the next, yes. Just regular coconut oil, you know, the hard stuff, and then mix it up and then put it on? Yeah, so you just, I, I was saying you want to try to make it softer probably. So whether you're going to use a double boiler or you're going to melt it somehow in the microwave for a little bit, or you could also mix it with your hands a little bit to soften up. But two tablespoons is kind of a lot of oil. But you, what you can do if you're, like, none of those things work, you can put it into a Ziploc bag, like um, you, the oil solid, 
and then you know just kind of like rub it in between your hands so that's something that you can do if you but i don't like to use plastic there you can use a silicone bag but um those are some ways that you can get that done and that's just to get the oil to absorb the baking soda yeah just to get it soft so that because you can't mix when it, the coconut oil is in a solid form mm -hmm. you can't mix it with the baking soda it won't mix you have to have it like soft enough to use and during right now it's fine the coconut oil is like liquid mm -hmm. right now mm -hmm. <laughs> but i'll show you do you know where the coconut oil is on my on my cabinet next to the essential oils no, um, I'll show you kind of like the liquid form we'll pass it around it's just one that I have in the office because I think it's a nice way to be able to use oil and it, it's all it always stays in it because it's fractionated yeah so you can just pass it around so yeah it's fractionated coconut oil it always stays in this liquid form so that's a really easy one that you can do and use to add your um, baking soda to and keep in your kit. This is one you don't want to have mixed up and keep in your kit. You want to mix it up like at that moment, right? Um, burns, so let's talk about burns. We talked about using a great salve for burns and what to do. So here's another one, coconut oil and a raw potato. <laughs> so major burns, of course, need immediate assistance, but we're, so we're talking about a minor burn here. So coconut oil is loaded with fats, especially vitamin E, and this is going to help soothe the skin, soothe that burnt skin. And a raw potato, again, will help moisturize the area, but it helps to pull out, just the same as we talked about with the clay and with a compress. Anytime we use something that, like, you know how potatoes will kind of turn a different color when you cut them? It's because they're oxidizing, so they're pulling stuff out of the air, so to speak. So raw potatoes will mo moisturize and soothe the area that you're having that burn. So what do you do here? So you massage one tablespoon of coconut oil into the burnt skin. Now, if it's really burned, you're not gonna wanna use a lot of pressure. You might wanna cool it off first with a cool compress or with lavender oil, something like that. And then you wanna uh, cut a slice of potato and then rub it into the burn for a few more minutes, okay? So that's another super easy one that you can do. And use this remedy every few hours until pain subsides. Of course, if it's um, a lot of pain, then you're gonna be using some of your Pedicularis, Valerian, and Kava Kava to reduce pain. And then using some of maybe some of your more, um, your salve and things like that that we made today that you could use for burns, okay? Okay, our next one, we're gonna be on page 18. We're gonna make a buck spray. Woohoo! Super good, we need it. <laughs> okay, so this is a really great buck spray. I love it. You can use this combination of oils that I've made for you today, but you, if you'd like to use something else in the same oils that we've talked about today, feel free. But these are the ones I know that are the best for bugs. So we, oh, lemon, eucalyptus, Remember, this is the one I mentioned that's been the most studied that is shown to be more powerful than DEET in bug wow. circumstances. Citronella essential oil, so we talked about that and we passed around the plant. It's a fabulous essential oil, really easy to purchase um, and keep in your medicine cabinet, especially in the summer. I love to just have it around. You know, one thing about essential oils, like I mentioned a couple classes ago, is that they can be adulterated with other fragrances. So if you're gonna buy as citronella candle i really don't recommend it unless you know that it's not tainted with chemicals you know make your own bug spray spray it in your environment around you or on your clothes if you're going to be sitting outside and then it has geranium and geranium so the plant geranium and citronella they're in the same family and so rose geranium smells great as citronella um, graviolens um and the the geranium and the citronella have that bug repellent that natural bug repellent so a great one to use so what we're going to do today is we're going to take witch hazel water and the these those three oils i just mentioned lemon eucalyptus so uh, citronella and geranium we're going to combine those if you like to use a different one you can do that we're going to make this recipe in half because we're using a two ounce bottle for our final completed step so we're going to use this one okay Dr. Lulu, sorry, yes. uh, citronella, geranium, and the um, lemon eucalyptus. Yes, yes, those okay. are the three. Great. Yep. Okay, super. okay, so you're going. Here is the step-by-step -step process. You're going to take your two-ounce spray bottle. Okay. You're going to add 60 milliliters of water. I'm oh, sorry. Scratch that. 30 milliliters of water and 30 milliliters of witch hazel. And we have enough to, we have all those three bottles so you can pass around. I don't know if they're open yet. Okay. 
Um, so half and half, right? We're doing one, a one to one ratio. 30 milliliters of water and 30 milliliters of witch hazel, and then you're gonna add your essential oils to that bottle and then label it and cap it off. And then we're gonna go outside and we're gonna see if it works. No? Yeah. Just kidding. Just stand by the truck. <laughs> we're gonna find a mosquito patch. <laughs> when I was, um, I think it was four, my parents took me on my first backpacking trip. And we were on Cumberland Island. Has anybody been to Cumberland Island? It's off the coast of Georgia. You have to take a ferry. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's a natural, a natural national park. And we were hiking and we got lost. And we went through this kind of, it's all palmetto, like trees and beaches. And so we go through this like palmetto forest and it's a swamp of water and we just got this it was a mosquito i had mosquito bites on every like surface of my body <laughs> so i'm immune now <laughs> they don't like me because i have like took my a natural vaccine to mosquito bites <laughs> mosquitoes no, I use mosquitoes. <laughs> no, I just use mosquitoes. <laughs> now they don't like me because I've been bitten so many times. Okay, so, uh, so how's everybody doing? We got the water being passed around. So 30 milliliters of water, 30 milliliters of your witch hazel, which remember witch hazel is great toner, it helps to cool the skin. I don't know, we're gonna, okay. how many drops of each, sweetie? Oh, so you're gonna use your essential oils and you're doing half of this recipe. 15 drops of lemon eucalyptus essential oil, five drops of citronella, and five drops of geranium. Okay, so you're gonna take that, the one that's right on your sheet here, and you're gonna divide that into two. Thank you. So when you use the witch hazel and the water together, and I'm gonna wait for you guys to mix some stuff up, just so you can hear me, or pay attention. How's our, so, ooh, look at that. For the camera, our salve is solidified very nicely. And see, just let them be a draft team. Smells great. Oh, yeah. For the camera. For the camera. Here's what we made at home. Or not at home, at the farm. Well, you're going to make it home. <laughs> hey, yes. Can I ask you a question? When you do the salves, can you make that and put it in like a little tin instead of a Yes, you don't. You can use any kind of container you want. Yeah, we just didn't have any of the tents. Any orders instead of places we got. Yes, Mountain Rose Herbs. Uh, I'll, I'll write it up here the container options. So we have containers. Okay, so there's Mountain Rose. I would really only buy containers from Mountain Rose Herbs if you're buying herbs from them. Because their containers are going to be marked up because they're not a container company. But you could, if you're buying, making an herb order, you could do that. And then Star West Botanicals. Thank you. And the other, you're doing well. Thank you, dear. Star West Botanicals. And then these are your like herb companies that have everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the uh, S K S. It's like S K S bottle. So this is a great one that you can get your um, bottles from wholesale. Like super, you know, you buy them at a case. You know, maybe you get like a case of these, right? The last, like, which is 12. But you can order by the quantity. But the more you order, the cheaper they are. Um, SK bottle and then specialty bottle. If you are the crafty little person and you are, think, hmm, it's going to be the fall and winter season is coming up. And I know that I'm gonna wanna make a lot of things for my friends and family. Order mm -hmm. stuff now. Oh. Because they are gonna run out. Yeah. The, and we're already seeing, we've, since the beginning of COVID, we've seen a big uh, long waiting list in supplies of everything. So I would order bottles, and you don't need to order a lot probably, but just think like, okay, what am I gonna wanna make? Maybe I'm gonna make some, um, ooh, that smells good. Yeah. I can. Smell the, the essential oils in the air. Mm, yeah. Smells good. It smells different than like, quote unquote, fake bug spray, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so yeah, if you're gonna, I would think about what herbs, think about what you're gonna make. Maybe you're gonna make some bath salts like we've made, or maybe you're gonna make some uh, salves, anything. And then order tins or bottles, maybe like 12 or 24 of each, just so you have them in stock. Um, and share, make an order with a friend, because then you can save on the shipping. Okay? I have a question. Yes. On the essential oils, I know you use doTERRA. Mm -hmm. Now, I see in the health food store sometimes it's or a case and they're a lot cheaper. Right. Yeah, they're, they're just not as pure as a quality. They're more adulterated where they'll mix them with things. Um, so the uh, Mountain Rose and Star West do sell essential oils, and, and they're not adulterated as well, so you could also get them from them. Yeah, so uh, this is sometimes I'll buy them from them if I'm looking for, if I need to get oils and I can't get them from, I usually get them from doTERRA, but wherever you're looking to buy from, you just want to make sure that they're not adulterated. So I don't buy them unless I'm desperate from the health food store yeah. because it's, they're, they're going to be using way lower quality plants uh -huh. to so make them cheaper right. for the public. Like, and the way that they process them and not organic all kinds of things come into the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and if you're making your own medicine you want it to be really high quality just the same as you wouldn't buy like a you know a dirty farms herbs right you know what I mean like you want to have something that's really clean and the water is clean they're using good practices they're standing behind everything they believe in yeah. so yeah there's a, um, but yeah these two will have everything that you need and maybe you only want to do one-stop shop <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. They have, Mount Rose particularly has a lot of er, uh, essential oils, but I think I mentioned last time that this one is the wholesale one. Oh. Okay. And I said, I think I mentioned to you, Carol, that if people wanted to make an order through me, um, you know, with a couple of people, I have a wholesale account, so you could get to, you could get together, and I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Yeah. Okay, now, do you, do you think they both have the same quality, both companies, as far as herbs? Right. Yes, yes, I like, um, they have different herbs, but they both carry organic and non-organic, um, and they have, I think that Star West has a larger um, collection. supply, collection, oh. quantity, like they have more stuff, okay. because they're, they're particularly geared towards wholesale, um, and they also have public too, but um, yeah, I, when I order bulk, I always order from, I order from them all the time, okay. because they're wholesale. Yeah. <laughs> and but sometimes if I can't find it because I'll order from Mountain Rose which you saw some of the stuff I ordered I was like okay well I can't find it I need it and let, that especially is true now okay all right how did everybody get their bug spray made their bug repellent still working on uh, adding it together so you're gonna label it um, and did you use the combination that I suggested there with the lemon yeah eucalyptus did that okay yeah. nice. so how does it smell did you spray it around yeah, nice, yeah. I, my hands smell fabulous. <laughs> nice, bonus. Yeah, we're gonna keep all the bugs away. And you know, another really nice thing that is great for making your own bug spray is it doesn't kill the bugs. It just repels the bugs. Bugs. We need bugs. <laughs> They're an important part of our ecosystem, right? We don't want to kill the bugs. The bug zapper or you know whatever. You know, we need to have the, we have the, have to have bugs. They help our plants. They help the all the other creatures and the life cycle, especially the bees. Mm -hmm. So when we use something natural, it doesn't kill them, and that's really important. Okay, uh, let's move. Is everybody done? Okay. Shape. Yeah. Let's move on to talking about bed bug bites. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not, right? So I did, I, debate, I debated on whether to include this in your um, handout. I feel like it's a jinx. It's a jinx. But I thought it was important because people are starting to travel again. And uh, I hear of them occasionally with patients. So anyway, I just wanted to have it in here for you so you would have it. So super easy formula. It uses white vinegar. So white vinegar is really cheap right easy to buy you can even buy it by the gallon if you want to i like to use the white as opposed to an apple cider vinegar because it's clear mm -hmm. you know it's like not really white but it's clear yeah. um and it's but you could use apple cider vinegar too uh and easily do that so these are bug bed bed bug bites if you ever have had them before they're little tiny like small red bites so the bugs that just chewed you up of where you're sleeping um i've only had them once I was, uh, where was I? I was in San Diego, I was staying at this hostel, 
and I was traveling by myself like around the country and um, I had the way the beds were they were beds but you had to bring your own sleeping bag and sleep on top which I did but I guess <laughs> the people before me had bed bugs like on the mattress I don't know so I woke up and I had like I had bed bug bites like all over me and I was like Man, I, this is not supposed to be that way. So I did tell the hospital about it, but you know, you never know if you're gonna go to a hotel or anything. The, the somebody could have brought them in with them, or also the hotel or environment could have them as well. Oh yeah, sorry, I'm not trying to give you guys any heebie-jeebies, <laughs> but now you know what you can use, right? Okay, so um, you're gonna take a white vinegar. And white vinegar is great because it helps to soothe the skin. It's going to help reduce that itchiness and really help calm the inflammation, really help those bug bites to reduce as quick as possible. And then you're going to use witch hazel oil. So this is different than the witch hazel like that we've been using. So this is an oil that you would buy. Um, you could also make your own, right? So witch hazel is very, it's, I think it's a common plant around here if I'm not mistaken. So it's easy, I don't know if you can uh, grow it yourself here, but you could also buy it and then make your own tincture, make your own oil. You know, that's one thing you're really learning about over these six weeks in different classes is you can make your own from anything that you buy, really learning how to make it fresh, dried, find your neighbor who has their plant to trade with them, all kinds of things. Yeah. Um, Okay, so witch hazel oil is really rejuvenating. It's gonna help those bug bites to reduce their inflammation as quick as possible. So you're gonna combine those two together. So you take a cotton ball. I had one here earlier, I, I put them away. You take a cotton ball, and then you're going to add, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so you take your um, vinegar, and you pour it into a little container, and then you soak your cotton ball. And then you're gonna add witch hazel oil to, you're gonna add five drops. To Three, four, five, and then you're gonna, I like to like kind of mush the cotton ball kind of together so it's combined. And then you're going to dab all of the bug bites. You might need more than one, depending on how many you have. And then you're gonna dab all those bug bites. So that immediately cools and calms the area. What are some of the essential oils that we've talked about today that might be helpful? Lavender. Lavender, yep. What was that? Lavender. Lavender, yeah, lavender is a great one. So you could use lavender, you could use peppermint, you could use tea tree, any of those. You could use chamomile, geranium, helichrysum, I, did, I talked a little bit about, but any of those are gonna help soothe the area. Um, a lot of our floral essential oils, like rose, geranium, ylang ylang, they're very soothing for the skin. So, you know, if you don't have one particular one, you can always look and see like, okay, what do I have? Could I use that to help? And you're the, um, the scientist, the doctor for yourself, right? So try something and see if it works. You know, just because it hasn't been ever used before doesn't mean it won't work on you, right? Each person is individual. Okay, so use this remedy up to two times per day for bug bites, and that should really help. Is that all bug or just bed bug? Bed bug bites. I mean, you can use it. You can use it for other stuff too. Yes. Just basically in the plane. Yeah, like if you have chiggers, chiggers is another one that's really good, or gnats, those three, like, the, you know, the small, tiny bugs that bite you all over. Gnats, chiggers, and bug, uh, bed bug bites. Those are the three I like to use this remedy for. So no CMs too. Right? Yeah, no CMs. Yep, all those ones you can't kill because they're so tiny, right? Microscopic. Okay, now we're going to move into talking about remedies for stomach upset. So this is a big one when it comes to first aid kit, especially traveling first aid kit, right? So um, whenever you're, if you're starting to move into traveling more, I mean, as you're moving into the holidays, visiting family, it's always great to have a little car kit or plane kit, something. So I always think about the top things I'm gonna need. Like, okay, one, I need something for a cough. I always bring a bag of cough drops uh, from the store with zinc and um, elderberry. I like those a lot because you never know if you're going to get something when you're traveling, right? So something for a dry cough, something for diarrhea and upset stomach. You just have the peppermint tincture that we all just made. Uh, you, and then something for pain in case you get hurt, like you get injured while you're traveling. Something to soothe and something topically. So that's like four things. So I think about those major things and then something for the immune system. Like your echinacea. You know, you want to try to keep your travel kit like really tiny, right? Because you're traveling. So you got something, maybe you want something for sleep. 
Okay, I'm gonna pick one of these th things I could help with sleep and for pain. Then I'm gonna take something for my immune system. Maybe I don't really need to take something for my skin. It just kind of depends. You know, how sensitive you are, you know. Some people, like, whenever they travel, they get stressed and they have a breakout. Like, there's all kinds of ways, well, reasons people get rashes. You might get hives from traveling because you're nervous and stressed out. Lots of things. You know yourself. Um, and then, like, ginger chews. I mentioned the ginger chews. These are a really good one, easy to bring for nausea or stomach upset. So just start thinking about that. And the other herb I wanted to mention here is golden seal. Golden seal is a wonderful immune boosting herb, great for the digestive system. It has berberine. So it, it, uh, what it does is it's really, really good for bacteria and viruses. So this would be like a golden combo <laughs> using echinacea. And can you guys all see that back there? Sorry, it's so low. Um, Echinacea and golden seal, that's a really good combination that you can use for the immune system. So you know, start thinking about that. I always have things when, when traveling, uh, my top five things I would know. Like one time I was traveling to uh, Nepal and we were on the river near the jungle and they had a flu there that Dave and I had never been exposed to before and we immediately got sick and we were sick for a month just like really bad respiratory and so you never know what you're going to get when you're traveling it could be anything right so you want to make sure you're prepared um and traveler's diarrhea is always one i think about when traveling it doesn't mean you're going out of the country it could be you know you ate at some restaurant that you got food poisoning from when you're traveling and nobody wants to be on the toilet while they're on vacation <laughs> for a long time so yeah this these things today are really going to help you make the traveler's kit in the long term one so mm -hmm. when you were when you had that sickness for a month, how did the herbs help? Yeah, so I had with me the some of these same things I'm talking about. And I had the, we needed to have the cough drops. That was a big one. Now I always take them. It wasn't even, it was um, in March. Like it wasn't even the time of year that we would think that we would be getting like a really bad flu. It just, they, there was a couple of reasons. One, they were had a flu there that we weren't exposed to, but they also, it was cool in the mountains and they burned tires for fuel oh. um, and, or sorry, heat. They burned tires like oh, as a heat source because they, that's what they have in really poor areas. And so we were exposed to a lot of really bad air. Um, so yeah, I always take things for my respiratory system. And as far as essential oils, I always take peppermint, lavender and a uh, rosemary and eucalyptus i think those in tea tree those are probably like my five that i take all the time when i travel <laughs> i try not to take too many things but i can use peppermint for upset stomach right and i can use it for bad breath bonus <laughs> I can, <laughs> tea tree i can use it for any type of fungal thing that might come my way like if i got like athlete's foot for me in the shower or who knows what you guys learned a lot about me today um, <laughs> lavender so lavender um you know we've talked about it so much it can be used for sleeping relaxation stress oh. depression it can be used for digestive upset it can be used for a rash so you know never go anywhere without it really Eucalyptus, so I always travel with eucalyptus because it, it breathing. I find that, you know, there's a lot of very, maybe I don't like the way it smells in the room that I'm in, or maybe I'm traveling during a time when things like now, when I need to have my respiratory system to be really active. So eucalyptus, rosemary is great. It helps open up the circulatory system and the brain. Okay, so it really helps me think and focus when I'm tired. Great for jet lag. Um, so those are just a few up ones that are good for traveling. I have a jet lag formula. I'll remember to get that in the next class. Um, let me make, I'll make a note. Um, Cause it's a great one. Um, even if you're just traveling to, you know, a couple hours away. And I think I mentioned this one time. What I like to do is I like to take the essential oils with me on the plane and I'll put them in a cotton ball and I rub them on the top of the air filter above my seat so that all the air that's coming out of, onto me is clean and it's also helping me to travel. So just that's a, my little tip. And usually I've, nobody, everybody likes it in my like... Say your neighbor's couple. Yeah, they're like, ooh, it smells so good, right? So those are some, some easy ones. It sounds like it might be helpful for the COVID. Some of these oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and some of the other like if you go back to the immunity one that we did, oh. the, those essential oils for the immunity, the, the really good like your cinnamon, your citrus family, all those are going to be really good. Like grapefruit, orange, lemon, bringing in, um, adding in, and I always put it uh, add in a 
one citrus one because I like to drink it through in my water, but yeah, that's a really good one. Okay, upset stomach, apple cider vinegar and ginger. So we've talked about ginger today. Ginger's claim to fame, I think, is a lot to do with the digestive system. It's really, you know, been used all around the world, especially in Eastern herbs for nausea and stomach upset. So apple cider vinegar helps to balance the pH and helps to calm the digestive system. Really good if you've had kind of like that spicy meal or irritating meal or you're having a lot of GERD, um, burping and things like that. So uh, the you take one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and one teaspoon of ground ginger. So this is, a, you could travel with this combination, but more probably for home first aid. And you add that to a cup of hot water and you mix it together and drink it really easily. Um, I usually don't recommend drinking that before a meal, but after, right? So, because you don't, you're, you could, but you don't want to put that much liquid in the system like right before, it's better after. And that's usually when you're having that upset stomach. Or if you've eaten a meal and then you're having like upset, you know, further down the line, or you're, you can't even eat. You have like no appetite because you feel so yucky, your stomach's upset, that's a really good time to drink it. Uh, drink this remedy up to four times per day until the upset stomach subsides. And I recommend that's away from food, so you might want to write that on there. Um, four times. Yeah, four times, uh, that's number two there. Drink this remedy up to four times per day away from food. So in between meals. Sometimes you can't eat when you're upset with your stomach. Or, and a lot of times in the emotional aspect, when it comes to upset stomach, that's all about worry. So then you could think about, okay, what am I worried about? Why is my stomach upset? You know, if I, uh, all kinds of things, right? So think about that. Why is my stomach upset? Do I have too much gastric juices that are coming back up through my lower esophageal sphincter from my stomach up and causing me to be upset? You know, so think about that in emotional aspects. Did I pass around this um, wheel before? I don't remember if I did. It was one of our earlier classes, uh, but I don't think yeah, everybody's yeah. seen okay. it. Yeah. This is a really fun one. I, can't, I think I ordered it online. I found it. Um, it is a wheel that you can use for essential oils. On one side, it has negative emotions, and then on the other, it has positive emotions. So it's a great one if you're starting to learn about essential oils. You're like, hmm, I'm experiencing. Let's go to the negative side. <laughs> uh, anger today. Hmm, what oil? Could you, oh, time helps with resentment. So it just like, you know, I'll pass it around and uh, it's really fun. I, I think the website's on there too. Okay, I yeah. Remember, right? And I just laminated it so and cut it out, my dorky self that I am. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you could do whatever you wanted to with it, but it's nice to you know just have your tools as you're learning, like you know have some something that's your go-to because when you, you when you're learning, I mean I find that I still use that all the time. There's just so many resources, sure. so that's a great. My directly phone there. That we remember from last time. I've heard a lot of other great benefits of apple cider vinegar. I mean, yeah. So many different things. It is. Yeah, apple cider apple cider mm -hmm. vinegar using a organic yeah. raw unfiltered one is yeah. really yeah. great really <laughs> great but yeah. yeah and you can drink a little bit each you know just a shot in the morning when you wake up I usually recommend doing two to four ounces with a little water and taking that each day that really helps to balance your pH or your digestive system. Three to four times a day even that? Uh, no I usually just once a day yeah you don't want to throw off your the stomach acid too right. much so because the hydrochloric acid can be then changed if yeah. we give it too much apple cider or vinegar so you do want to have that balance. And could be bad on your enamel of your teeth too. Right. Oh, yes. I didn't know that. Okay, uh, let's talk about nausea. So another really good one for your first aid kit. So this one is clove. We mentioned clove to tie earlier as we were talking about tooth pain. Now we're talking about using it for nausea. And clove, you can use the essential oil um, or you can use the clove powder. You're probably are familiar with that for the holiday season. And it has, it's very, very like numbing, right? So it helps to numb kind of the digestive system and that, um, nausea coming up from the digestive system. Mm. So clove is a powerful natural aroma that helps to overcome that sick feeling, that sick feeling of the stomach. And it helps to soothe the like angry or aggravated stomach. And cumin seeds, they, so if you, does everybody know the cumin seed? Sometimes it's not as familiar. Um, you can also use fennel seed um, and we have some in the garden. If you want to take some home today, please let us know. It's, re it's ready to be harvested. Um, so if you'd like to take a little bunch home and you could make a tincture, it's a great one to add to your first aid kit. Um, I put it, did put it on here. This is another 
This is a quinoa is a great one for digestion. So let us know if you'd like to take a little bit of that home. And um, so you take one teaspoon of clove powder and one teaspoon of ground cumin seed. So you're gonna take the you know from your spice jars, or you can also. I like to change out my spices. Actually, I like to buy them myself. Um, from these places, I buy a small amount that I can, and then I just change out my spice jars once a year. Because you know, if you have a spice in your that you're only using once a year, you know it's not going to be that great. So I usually change it out. Um, but clove from your spice cabinet and cumin seeds from your spice cabinet. Grind them up. Add it to the hot water and let's steep for five minutes and then drink. Really great for nausea. You could also, again, use the fennel. You could use fennel, uh, switch that out instead of the cumin seeds. That would be a really good one. Um, and you could also drink fennel tea by itself too, or take the tincture. Okay, all right, perfect. Okay, vomiting, <laughs> hopefully not one you're experiencing very often, but one that is needed for first aid kit, for sure. Um, so clove and peppermint, two really good ones for vomiting. We talked about using Nux Vomica, the homeopathic remedy for um, nausea, also really good for vomiting. So vomiting can be caused by lots of different things, right? It could be caused by, <laughs> of course, over alcohol consumption, food poisoning, <laughs> stomach disorders, all kinds of things that your body can react to. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a clove, which I mentioned is that antiseptic aspect because we really, really wanna help soothe the system. And also clove is really high antiviral. So a lot of times if you have some vomiting from a quote unquote stomach bug, right, you want to get in there and really kill the um, critter, the bug, the virus, bacteria, and you could bring on, in addition to helping with the vomiting, <laughs> you could bring on uh, the echinacea and the golden seal that we talked about to help with your immune system. Uh, echinacea and golden seal. Mm -hmm. um, those two are really great, because remember I mentioned golden seal has berberine, and berberine really is a really, really good at helping with the gut bacteria, helping to fight off bad bacteria. So once you've stopped vomiting, <laughs> then you can start bringing on some of your herbs to help your immune system get back on track. So you take one tablespoon of dried peppermint, super easy. You can either use dried peppermint you purchased or you can make your own. I would say definitely an herb you should be growing and making on your own. Take some from our garden if you need to. <laughs> um, one teaspoon of clove powder. So you add those to a cup of hot, hot water, steep for five minutes, Strain and then drink four times a day until the vomiting subsides. If you are having vomiting for more than 24 hours, please seek out medical care. There's something else you know you need to address and you don't want to get dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So bringing in on some electrolytes, whether it's an electrolyte water or orange juice, if you could stomach that, or some water with some salt, a little bit of salt to help your body to absorb. Um, but yeah, really replenishing the body. And if you're having, you know, the double duty where like vomiting and diarrhea together, that can really dehydrate you fast. So make sure you seek medical care. Um, okay, great. Epsom salt baths, but if you're having a headache, this is a really good one. And also you applying a cool wash cloth, wash, wash cloth to the forehead or behind the neck while you're in the bath or even doing a foot bath, doing one cup of salt in a foot bath and then applying a cool cloth to the head. What that does is the coolness pulls the heat down from the head to the feet. So it's this great reaction. Um, so that's a really good one. <clears throat> okay, and then rosemary, rosemary essential oil here. This is our anti-inflammatory oil. It's the, all about the brain. Even as our, an herb, we use it for circulation. So it opens up the circulation passages of the brain. It helps the blood flow to the brain through the carotid arteries. It helps decrease inflammation as an analgesic. And it will decrease both this formula together, lavender and rosemary will really help decrease the pain, especially at the site. So how to use the remedy. Massage two drops of lavender oil and two drops of rosemary oil into your forehead. So you can do these neat directly in, on the forehead, especially if you're having a, for, um, a frontal lobe headache 
or you could do in the back in the occiput area right under you know at the base of the skull that's where a lot of people will have headaches or in the temporal area um not to close rosemary can be a little stimulating close to the eyes so just be aware of that but you don't need to use an oil you can apply them neat but we're gonna do um we're gonna talk about the migraine one next and then we're gonna let you choose whether or not you want to make the one for headaches or the one for migraines based on what you experience yourself, okay? So for headaches, you see uh, lavender, peppermint, and rosemary? Lavender and rosemary is for headaches. Yes, you can use peppermint too as well, but we're gonna be using peppermint and eucalyptus for the migraine. Thank one. you, I just wanna make sure I get everything out. So you can use this for me up to four times a day. So we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it into um, a roller bottle. Okay, so I would like, if you want to do the lavender one, um, you and rosemary for the headaches you can it's a 50 50 ratio but we're going to be doing it in here so you're going to do five drops of each and this is a uh, 15 milliliters of oil i believe that's correct so five drops of each okay so that'll be if you want to make the headache formula um and that's a really good if you can start if you want to start passing out the oil into okay. their... Who would like a uh, headache first? Headache? Anybody else for headache? 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 Okay, now... Sorry, migraines? Migraines? Oh, look at all my hands. Migraines! <laughs> So migraines are, you know, a severe form of headache, and they can be triggered by lots of different reactions, from food, stress, physical, emotional, five, what, five, oh, of the, of the migraines? Yes, we're gonna do the same thing. Five drops of eucalyptus and five drops of peppermint. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So what you're I gonna- I pay attention then I get- That's good, yeah. What you're gonna do is you're gonna be putting those drops into here, and then you're gonna add the oil. So you can go ahead and do that if you want while I'm talking, or you can wait, or you can wind, it's fine. Um, so yeah, again, eucalyptus is opening up the respiratory passages. You know, it's you can use it topically on the chest, right underneath the nose. You could make a steam bowl bath. Um, you could put it in your shower. You can use it topically. Yeah, anything to help open up the respiratory system. And then peppermint. You know, peppermint is our really helps all those the. We want to vasodilate. We want things to uh, op open up because they're constricted with headaches. So vasodilation helps the blood vessels to open up and move things and circulate. So peppermint does that. So eucalyptus again helps to relieve the tension of the migraine and helps to open up the respiratory passages. And peppermint is a pain reliever. It's an anodyne analgesic. So topically, it's going to immediately reduce that. If you have a history of migraines and, you know, and things are not helping, it's good to seek out some medical attention just to figure out kind of like what's the cause, what's the root of it, what, why are they going on so you can have more help, especially if you get them periodically. A lot of times I'll find that it's a B complex deficiency or B12 deficiency. Um, okay. Okay, yeah, so you're going to, right now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to either make a headache roll-on or a migraine roll-on, depending on your choice. Then we're going to take the jojoba oil and you're going to pour it into your little, do you have one that's dry? Do you have one that's dry? Yeah, well you can, let's get some smaller ones. Oh, just fill up to the neck of the bottle? Yes, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's 15 milliliters. Just looking for a little small one. Uh, what, what can I grab that little one? Oh, small one. Small what, sweetie? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, we could. You could use a measuring cup. We want. We're trying to really not pass things around as much. I can go get more plastic cups. Why don't I do that? Okay. Yes. Yeah. You can use it. If you, it just has a tiny bit of water. Just shake yeah. it out. I just don't want you to have water and oil like mixing. Yeah. And so, but let's pass around. Um, let's do it this way. Does it still have to? Yep. Well. Wow. You want two? Yep. Pass them around. We still, have to, okay. we still have to pass it around anyway. But it, it really just helps. I know. Want a small one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one, these are nice because they have the yeah. little pouring yeah. one. Okay. There we go. Okay, perfect. So that's your ho ho oil. Your ho 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 oil. <laughs> 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 your ho ho is going to be your carrier 
oil for this. So how I recommend using the headache formula, if you're prone to headaches and migraines, I would pretty much carry it with you all the time, like in your purse or in your pocket or in your car. Keep it in your toolkit, of course, but you know, you wanna have access to it because a lot of times I find that a head, people will just get the headache, it will come on suddenly and then they're not, they don't have the tools, right? So know what those tools are that you need. Uh, label this one, headache, migraine, <clears throat> excuse me, and the date so that you can use it and apply as often as needed. Okay, so if you're prone, say you're having, if you have, uh, here's a great example. You get stress headaches or stress migraines and you know next week you're like, oh my gosh, you're manifesting it already. I'm gonna have a really stressful week. I'm gonna get headaches. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna have time to drink water. Like all the different things and you're gonna get busy. So you're gonna know in advance that you need to start using it. Start using it before you get the headache. That's the most preventive part about headaches and migraines is use it before. If you can use it before, then it reduces the possibility of one getting it, but also reduces the length of the headache and migraine, right? So use some of these tools that I mentioned here. Okay, great. Is every, how's everybody doing in their making of stuff? We're still in the process. Awesome, okay. So headaches and migraines, again, you could use, this is your essential oils, right? We talked about lavender, peppermint, rosemary, eucalyptus. As far as your pain, Particularis, valerian, and kava kava in your toolkit to have that immediate relief. And then topical, you could use the salve that we created today and you could make a topical pain relief. You could use arnica, um, homeopathic we talked about, orally. And you could, in your salve, if you're prone to headaches, you could add peppermint and lavender. Those are a great one. And rosemary and eucalyptus. You could add, make a really great topical salve for pain relief, okay? You can also, basil is also a good one. And basil is really great for headaches. So that's a, a you might wanna, if you're making your um, headache remedy or in your notes on your pad, write down basil. That's a really good one. I like to add into migraine and headache formulas. Oh, do you need help with those? Yep, got it. Okay. These are the little, so the, um, you have the two pieces for your roll on. So you're gonna have the one piece goes in and then you put the other, Oh, you, you put the bigger piece in first, and then you put the roller. The ball goes in second. Yeah, it pops okay. right in. Pops right in. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Now you can roll it on. How does it smell? Does it smell good? Uh, Yummy. It great. Yummy. Yeah. And, you know, I mentioned before, I love making roll-ons. They're so easy, right? I mean, that was, took us like uh, five minutes you can make a roll-on. Yeah. And we have learned today and over the past couple of weeks so many things we can use as essential oils. And you could make, you know, you could have your ten, let's just say seven. Maybe have your seven main things that you're wanting to work on. Maybe like, okay, I want to have a roll-on for sleep. I want to have a roll-on for energy. I want to have a roll-on for pain. I want to have a roll-on for headaches. Whatever it is, make your roll-ons and have them be like, you know, ready for use so that you're prepared for when you need them. They can be in your toolkit or not. Maybe they're just on your calendar with like cute stickers or highlighters or whatever you like to label stuff. <laughs> Okay, well that's it for today. What I'm gonna take, oh yes, thank you. <laughs> Surveys, so a couple things we're wrapping up today. One, I'm gonna take questions um, from you, lovely attendees, and let me know if you have any questions about anything I've talked about today. And remember, we have two more workshops this summer on the 11th and the 18th. And also- And we also need volunteers for pre-setup. Yes, we do. If you want to help volunteer, we'd love to have yep. some free setup help. Yep. Um, as we're moving towards the end of the summer at the farm, our volunteers kind of taper out a little bit. And so, you know, we, st we still are, we're still going, so we love help. Um, this is a survey we'd love for you to fill out. Even if you've already filled out one and you've been here before, please fill it out again because the content today was different, right? And this is actually a new workshop. I haven't taught about first aid here before, so I love comments about it, how you liked it, how it went, compared to other stuff. Um, also, I don't remember what I was no, going to say. No, that was it. Okay, good. Questions. 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 Yes. 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 Yes.
all the remedies you can use as a roll-on? Yes, you can use a, a, a tons of essential oils can be used in this. Yes, anything, yeah, you can make a combination. But what I was saying was kind of going back to the other workshops. So we did anxiety and depression. Maybe you need one for helping uplift the mood, right? Then we did one for the immune system. You could make one for your, like I like to use for the immune system. I like to actually make a spray because then I can like spray it wherever I go. Like, woo, you know, I, I put it. For me, I make like an immune spray and then I spray it in the car. As soon as I go somewhere, like as soon as I get back in the car, I'm like me making a hand sanitizer, spraying in my environment. Uh, you could make a roll on for sleep. You can make one for energy. You can make one for pain and inflammation. You can make one for your headaches, migraines, nausea. Like there's so many different things you okay, can do. So, and where would I like for headaches? Oh yeah, where would I put it? pulse points. So our pulse points are our wrists, right? And so behind the ears, behind the neck, you can also do like on the forehead if it's not as too, too strong of an oil. Okay. And then you have on the bottom of your feet. So those are like main, you could, and the palms of the hands, the chakras opening things up. You could also do something on the, like the, right on the sternum, the chest system to open up the heart system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Questions? Yes. Yeah. I was curious about uh, stuff in the environment that are other plants that are already there without without combining them with other things? Are there other remedies that uh, I've heard of? Uh, I think jewel weed. It's oh, like right. It grows in it that you can rub on it if you're exposed to it and don't have access to other... Right. I don't any, know about... Any right. Any, yeah, I don't know much about the jewel weed, but I have heard that, I think. Yeah, so I think your question is, like, are there plants in the environment that you can use um, if you're, you know, you don't have your toolkit right. right out when you're, like, hiking or something? I don't know a lot. It would just depend on where you were, okay. too. Um, but yeah, always look in the environment of the plant. But also, if you're not familiar with plants and you're hiking or something, you might no not know, and then you like rub something on you. So yeah, yeah. yeah better. I think it's better to uh, not take something, use something unless you really know, okay. and then go home and wash it off like right away if you can, or carry like some wipes, like little towelettes. You know, sometimes I'll just do that if I know I'm hiking or foraging for herbs or something, I'll just carry some little things I can wipe off from the poison oak or poison ivy. Um, it doesn't bother me. That's another story. <laughs> you hear about that one later. <laughs> right, yes. Uh, anybody else? Yes. Yeah, one thing I've heard a little wise tale, this is probably true after hearing your class here, about when a child had a real bad tinge or cut a potato hat, put it on their foot and tape it to the foot to help absorb it out the heat. Would that for, be a for, for what? So a child having a uh, bad fever. Oh, a fever. Cut a potato hat, tape it to the bottom of the foot. And yeah. pull the heat it's out. Heat, of the yeah, it probably would. Reduce I, the temperature. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one, but we talked about using the potato for burns, and I'm, I'm sure that would work. I know one of the things we use is um, for ear infections is using um, you bake an oven, uh, you bake an onion, you cut the onion in half, and you bake the onion in the oven till it's warm, and then they're called onion earmuffs for kids. And you put them on the ears, and the onion, what it does is it draws out the infection. So there's lots of different like things like that we use. So. Um, yeah, I haven't heard the potato one, yeah. but I can look it up. Yeah, it yeah. sounds it sounds like it would totally work. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. When I was using the peppermint, I got some on my fingers. I adjusted my mask. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm, I'm in heaven. Yeah. yeah. More and more. Did yeah. you put oil in your masks? Um, I, I don't put it in my mask. I, I actually try not to wear my mask as much as I can, but I, unless I have to, I know we're having to wear a mask now. But I usually don't put it in my mask uh, because it's, sometimes it's hard to get the smell out. Um, and so, but it's what I, but it's peppermint. I know, but peppermint is so good. Yeah, I, that's a, a great one. I think I told the story about how when I was in medical school, I would put the essential oils in my mask to, for the formaldehyde. Oh, so you could totally put put them on your mask. Yeah, um, you could also do a spray. Or yes. roll on, yeah. That's something you could totally do. Yes, and, and a great idea, because you know it's, it helps. To, right now, we're when we have the mask on, it's cutting off our breathing, right? We really so peppermint, eucalyptus, rosemary. Those are going to help to open up those respiratory passages and help us to be clear, because we don't want to keep anything in the mask in there. We want all the dust and everything to leave. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Carol. Uh, I'm going to do trailer and got that real smell. Oh, the moldy smell. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, like from an off-gassing of furniture. Uh, well, whatever the plant yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything good for that? 
Yeah, that would be, I would probably use like citrus, like the lemon family, lemon, lime, grapefruit, and I would put a diffuser in there. Um, and I would just diffuse it for like 24 hours to try to get the air. The yeah, yeah, the citrus, you can use citrus, rosemary, eucalyptus, um, cinnamon, all of the, like to open up the, you know, to clear the mold. Um, I think that would be good. Or just must, the formaldehyde, you said. Yeah, yeah. new material. Yeah, yeah so um, yeah, I would air it out and then put a diffuser in there and just run it for like over and over again to clear out the smell. Yeah, that will help. And then using a spray, so you could on the furniture you know wiping it down or something okay. yeah mm -hmm. cedar wood would also be good that cedar you know using the ones for cleaning mm -hmm. um, cedar peppermint rosemary citrus yeah using a cleaner mm -hmm. okay wonderful well, thank you everyone thank for you. Um, make sure you take your flowers with you bring back the base make sure you leave the hand sanitizer and the cool off spray <laughs> and we'd